will be question number 24. So, what is the answer? So, all of you right? What is the answer? Any response? Okay, so this is a slightly tricky one question. The main point is in the question that uh, in an examination, Raman score to 80 marks fell short of qualifying marks by 10% of total marks. So, one important point is this is the total marks, okay. So, the Base, is, base of this percentage 10 percent is total. In the second one it says it, if he had scored 396 marks his score would have been 10 percent more than the qualifying marks. Right. So, the two bases are different that that is why this becomes a tricky question otherwise the question was easy the total uh, the two percentages will have, would have been on the same basis. For this question if I assume the qualifying marks is equal to x let us say ok. So, in the first one he got 280 marks sorry uh, yeah, he got 280 marks and the qualifying marks were x. So, the shortage is of x minus 280. So, here is a shortage of x minus 280 which is equal to 10 percent of total marks right in the first one is this in the second one he got 10 percent more marks than qualifying marks. So, qualifying marks is x 10 percent more than this is nothing but 1.1 of x which to 396. If you solve it, this will give you x as 360, which is the qualifying marks. If you put it here, you will get total as 360 minus 280 is 80. So, 10% of total is 280, that means total was 800, right? And the rest, everything can be solved now. He asking one what is the percentage of total marks for the qualifying marks. So, in this one this is the qualifying marks this is the total marks. So, the percentage can be calculated that this upon 800 into 100 that gives you your answer. So, do you have any doubt in this all of you clear with this if any doubt please ask. I guess no, right. So, let us move on to next question then. Uh, once again, uh, if I come back to the question, if uh, instead of qualifying marks, it should be written, it has written that total marks. So, that basis of the two percentages becomes same. In that case, the simple answer would be the difference of these percentages is 20 percent right and the difference in the marks is 116. So, you can straight away say that 20 percent of the total marks will be 116 that gives you uh, total marks as 5 times of 116 which is nothing but 116 right. Uh, Dinesh is ok ok Dinesh. I will try this. So, are we clear with the second approach, second question? The second question would have been easy 20 percent of total will be equal to 1, 1 by 116, total is nothing but 116 into 1 1 into 5 times will give you the answer, right? Ok. Second is a slightly tough question. LCM of two positive integer a and 24 is 30 times of their HCF. 
so one number is a one number is 24 their lcm is 30 times of hcf so if i assume the hcf is x for example so lcm would have been Thirty into x. Clear with this part, right? Okay. Now we know the property that first number into second number will be equal, will be equal to the product of their HCF and LCM. So we can simply say that a into twenty-four. Will be equal to thirty into x square h seven twelve cm. Right. This gives you four by five of a will be equal to x square. Now we clear this part. Right. So if I go over the options now, first option say A is equal to eighty. So one number is eighty, one number is twenty-four. So if I put eighty here. You will get x as eight. Okay. So which is clear, I guess, because eight is the HCF of eighteen and twenty-four. So that's not not a problem. The question asks for cannot be the value of a. If I put the second option B, which is a as one eighty, gives you x as twelve. So again, this is also possible because else HCF of 180 and 24 can be 12, right? Now, if I say the third question, third option, which says a equal to 405, this gives you x as 1. Four zero five is for this gives you x as eighty one into four that is eighteen. So I am getting x as an integer, right? But the problem is HCF of four zero five and twenty four cannot be eighteen because four zero five is an odd number, and although it twenty Four is not a multiple of so this option will be ruled out. Okay, so my right answer will be C. A and B are possible. C is not possible. The answer is C. Some of you must have like this answer wrong. You must have marked B. Why? Because you have just checked that x has to be integer, which is coming in all the three cases. You had not checked the last part that 18 should be HCF of 405 and 24, right? That has to be satisfied also. Clear with this part? All of you clear? Okay. Let's move on to next now. This was an easy question, twenty-sixth, I guess. The age of the Rajput and age of Puddu in two thousand eight. That means straight away I can say R is equal to G plus two. Secondly, says Raju, Puddu, and Sanjay's average age is equal to one year more than Raju in that year. 
So that gives you R plus G plus S upon 3 which is the average will be equal to R plus 1. And thirdly, he says Sanjay's age is 34 years. So S is nothing but 34. So this gives you three equation, three variable. You can easily solve it. And you'll get the answer. The only thing is that this data is for 2011. Right. So and he's asking for the good do's age in 2012. So you have to mark, you have to add one in your answer, that will give you the answer. Done, all of you? Please ask if you have any doubt in this. This year 2008 is of no significance here. At any given year, good do, uh, Raju will be two year more than good do only, whether it is eight, nine, ten, eleven, any year, okay, okay, so no doubt I guess, next moving on, 27, any doubt, should I discuss it, this simply gives you cost price and selling price of one article, you can straight away find the percentages, profit percentage, profit of, sorry, uh, Cost price of 13 article is equal to 195, that means cost price is nothing but 15 rupees. This gives you selling price of 12 article is 198, this gives you selling price of one article is nothing but 16, sorry not 16, how much come out to be? 16.5, right. So you got sell cost price, you got selling price, you can e easily find the profit percentage. How can we assume that all are similar, which are similar? Vivek, which question you are talking about? Yeah, so what are similar? Articles, article has to be same. If I say cost price of 13 article is 195, and the selling price of 12 articles is equal to 198, so article has to be same. There is no point of uh, different articles here, right? Okay. We know this saying, can you go back to the previous question? Which question you are talking about? 26? We know this question. No response. Okay. Then uh, next quant or AR question will be. Yeah. This is again a good question, tricky one. PQRS are the members of a family in which both of them always speak the truth. And when they are asked about the relationship following other replies. And we know that exactly two people out of PQRS always speak the truth, right? Exactly two of them always speak the truth. Now listen, in every uh, type, these type of question, in, in this one it is given that two of them speak the truth, it can be only one of them speak the truth, it can be like that only one, only all three of them will, be, will speak the truth, right. So, the idea is uh, always we have to, the, one of the question would have been always that which of the following, who are the people who speak the truth or telling a lie and so on and forth, right. It's always better to check the options if the such questions are there. Otherwise, what will happen that you have to make six cases. For example, in this one, uh, four members are there. 
So I have to take six cases. The two pe people who are speaking the truth can be P and Q, can be P and R, can be P and S, can be Q and R, can be Q and S, and can be R and S. So you have to take six cases and then solve it. Some of them will 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 look okay. Some will and others will will be not okay. Will look okay. So you can get multiple answers also, but generally it will not happen in your in your cases, right? So if I just see the first option. Uh, which is the following two members of family always speak the truth? That's the same question we are talking about, right? So first option is P and Q. Now see, see the statements of P and Q. Can these two statements simultaneously be right? P is saying Q is my husband. Q is saying P is my husband. So both of them simultaneously cannot speak the truth. Am I right? Because they are they are saying contradictory thing, right? That means first cannot be my answer. Right now, C. Q says uh, P is my husband. R says P is my mother-in-law. Again, contradiction because husband has to be male, mother-in-law has to be female. So a same person cannot be male and female simultaneously. So Q and R cannot be the truth. Second option also ruled out. Third says Q and S. Q says P is my husband. R is my son. S says R is my husband, P is my father-in-law. So there is no contradiction looks here, right? So this can be true. Just check the fourth again. P and R. P says Q is my husband. And uh, R says uh, Q is my daughter. So again contradiction because here it is a male, here Q is female. That means fourth is also ruled out. So the only option left is Q and S. Am I clear? So definitely I can say that King the truth while P and R are not speaking the truth, right? Clear with this? So if, if Q and S are speaking the truth, so I can simply take their statements as positive one. So Q says P is my husband. That gives you that P and Q Our husband and wife, and P is a husband. That means it's a male, and Q is a female, right? And as saying R is my husband, sorry, I have one other also there. P is my husband, and R is my son. So Q is saying that R is my son. That means it looks like this. Then S is saying that R is my husband. So that means R's wife is S. And P is my father-in-law, which is also looks good, okay here. So can I say this diagram is right? According to Q and S, speaking the truth. This gives you some family diagram. So the rest two questions can be solved on based on this. C. Uh, 39, which of the following statement is true? P is male, R is female. So here P is male and R is also male. So first is ruled out. And B is the right answer. P and R both are male, which is clearly written there. 39 is B. 40 is saying which of the following statement must be false? First says R's wife always speak the truth. See this. Who is R's wife? S. And S always speak the truth? Yes. That means first statement is right. Okay. But he is asking for the false statement. Second says P's wife always speak the truth. Who is P's wife? Q. Again, Q is also speak the, speak the truth. So this is also right. Cannot be my answer. Third says S mother-in-law always speak the truth. S mother-in-law. S mother-in-law is Q again, and she speak the truth, obviously. So third is also right. Fourth says Q's son always speak the truth. Who is Q's son? Q's son is R, but R is not speaking the truth. So that means fourth statement is my answer because it is false.
इज इट ओके नाउ कविता एनी बडी एस एड ऑल इन थर्टी नाइन फोर्टी थर्टी एट ओके so this is some good questions in this mock All right again a good question of ar six friends l m n o p q r are sitting around a rectangular table facing the center such that two friends are seated along each of the longer side and one is seated each along the shorter side okay so there is a rectangular table right and two sitting on the longer side two on the shorter side one on the shorter side sorry so it will be like this okay right so first of all is saying that uh, the first information is m is sitting diagonally opposite to l now the only two diagonally opposite points are either this or this do we clear with this implied these are the only two positions which are which we can say are diagonally opposite yes or no So I guess no doubt in this one. So diagonally opposite M and L are sitting diagonally opposite, right? So that means there can be two possibilities: M here and L here, or M here and L here. Yes or no? Apart from these two possibilities, there is no third possibility or fourth possibility can be arrived. Either is this way or in this way. Okay. Second says only R is sitting between M and Q. Now this gives you again lots of possibilities. So we'll first check the third statement. Third is saying P is sitting opposite to M. So P is sitting opposite to M. That means either it will be here, and in this case it will be here. All right now comes to the second part only r is sitting between m and q so only r is sitting between m and q that means r has to be here in this case and q has to be here and in this case q has to be here and r be here and the only person left is n which comes in the opposite of q so we have two possible cases here So my answers could vary, right? Okay. Now see the option questions. Who is sitting opposite to N? So which is very much clear. N के opposite में Q बैठा है. That means my answer is A option. ठीक है? Okay. Forty second. Who are the two friends sitting along one of the longer sides of the table? This is again clear, I guess. The, the one couple couple is R and M, and the other is L and P. So, so M and R is in the option. This is also right. Right. Forty third. Which one is definitely true? Okay. M is sitting the immediately right of N. Here it looks okay. Nee, sorry. Uh, M is sitting immediately right of N. Right. So in this diagram it is right, but in this diagram it is wrong because M is sitting to the left of N, not right. See, in any ways when we when we have uh, two arrangements which are just opposite, one is uh, clockwise and other is anti-clockwise. None answers, none statement which gives you that this is right of this, this is left of this can be true. 
all such statements will definitely be false. If somebody is saying m in right of uh, n and n in right of m, the all will be false. Vivek is asking why m and l can't sit along shorter side. How can we do? We already made the diagram. In the shortest side, you are you cannot sit directly opposite. These are opposite only. In the first one, it is says m is directly diagonally opposite to l. So this position cannot be diagonally opposite to any position. So I cannot put m and l on the shorter side. Is it clear, Vivek? Shorter side opposite hongi. Okay, right. That is clear. Who is this person? Manus, why are you so late for asking this question? Twenty-seven is way back done. You are not there, but you are late for, for asking the question. Get to the center. Right. So what I am saying is, uh, your question was seen. I asked. Uh, I I just cleared this point to you that please write on the chat box, not in the question uh, question and answer, right? So I can clearly see in the chat box the question and answer somehow will be mismatched. So Manas, next time please just uh, write your query in the chat box, not in the question and answer, right? So Manas will come back to this later, right? Okay, there is no problem. So what I am saying is uh, no statement which gives you right or left of this person can be right. That means these two statements has to be false only. Okay. The third is saying L is sitting between P and Q. So L is sitting between P and Q looks okay in both the positions. Okay, so this is the right answer. So are you clear with this th these three parts? Forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. Right. Forty four is I guess very easy question, so you must have done it. The simple question is copper, zinc and nickel are in the ratio four, six is to five is to four. Cobalt is uh, mixed uh, two fifty grams in the same alloy. Percentage of zinc in the new one will be what? So in the initial one, zinc is what? Zinc is the second part, right? Which is five. So it is five out of fifteen. Into one three five zero. Now the quantity of zinc will not change, but the total which changed to one three five zero into hundred will be the answer. Yeah. So that's. Very easy question again. Forty-five. From a point P, Avinash walks thirty meter towards north. So, thirty meter towards north. Then moves. Uh, Turn left. Left means in this direction. Walks uh, twenty. So here it is thirty. Here it is twenty. And the again turn left and walk ten. So this is ten. And then again, left and walk fifty. Now see, fifty means this twenty plus thirty. 
आई क्लियर तो ये आपका ट्वेंटी था दिस वॉज टेन ये पूरा फिफ्टी बनेगा इसका मतलब ये आपका ट्वेंटी हो जाएगा एंड दिस पार्ट विल भी थर्टी ये थर्टी आपका ऊपर तक है ओके वॉक्स फिफ्टी एंड देन फाइनली टूक्स राइट टर्न एंड वॉक्स ट्वेंटी सो अगेन ही टेक्स राइट टर्न दैट मीन्स इन दिस डायरेक्शन साउथ ट्वेंटी मीन्स ही विल बी कॉलिनियर विद दिस पॉइंट नाउ because this is 10 so this is 20 that means ye dono points aapke ek line mein aa jayenge so the question is simple that this is 30 nothing less so how far is in the inverse direction is p from q so this was p and this was q so distance is 30 and uh, the direction is west so answer is same only इजी क्वेश्चन राइट लेफ्ट फोर्टी सिक्स इज अगेन अ गुड क्वेश्चन बाबू भाई वॉक्स फोर्टी मीटर टूवर्ड साउथ फोर्टी मीटर टूवर्ड साउथ टेक्स राइट turn and walks 30 and he sees uh, kabira standing 20 meter away from him let's say this is the point where kabira is standing standing and this is 20 meter from this point so he got afraid and he turned back and walks 40 meter 40 means just back to 30 plus 10 and then takes a left turn and walks 40 so it will be right, right here and then again take takes a left turn and walks 30 so it will be like this okay so in this one and this is 10 this is 10 and this is 20 okay so now this is Kabira, this is Babu Bhai. He is asking for first of all the distance between the two. So you can simply make a triangle here. So this is twenty plus this is ten. This is nothing but thirty. This is nothing but forty. So you can straight away use the Pythagoras theorem, three, four, five triplet. So distance is fifty. First of all, and uh, what is asking? How far is Babu Bhai now from Kavira, and in which direction with respect to his own initial point? Who is asking for this? The concerned person is babu bhai so babu bhai is 50 meter from kabira and babu bhai is to the west of his initial position so my answer is a only distance is 50 and the direction is west for babu bhai clear all of you
Okay, let's move on to the next question then. This is a very easy question. Let's see. Some of you must have doubt in first, second, or third. Let's say. So there are three types of employees: P1, P2, P3. The employee rate is two, three, five uh, for temporary. So this is two. This is and this is five. And for permanent employee, it is one, two, and four. So one, two, and four. In the question of uh, P1, P2, P3, and temporary and permanent, so call a mat करने पड़ेंगे, through that करने पड़ेंगे, that's the only thing you need to do. So this is nothing but 600. This is 250 only. This is 600. This is 360. This is 700. And this is 880. So if you add P1, which gives you 850, P2, which gives you 960, this gives you 1580. If you need to find temporary total, this gives you 600 plus 700, which is nothing but uh, 1900. Total of permanent will be 360 plus this plus this will give you 0, 8, 6, 14 plus 5, 19, 2, 8, 3, 11, and 3, 14. Right, so what is the question asking now? What was the total wages earned by permanent employees in producing all the three projects? So 1490, we can easily calculate it. The, which was the cost incurred towards wages of producing P2? So P2 was 960. Which of the following statement is are true? Temporary workers were paid more than permanent for all the three products. Temporary is more than permanent. Temporary is more than permanent. It is false statement. It is 900, it is 1490. So first is false. Second, P1 involved more cost towards wages compared to P3. P1 involved more as compared to P3. This is false again. More bulla, less bulla. Yeah. Oh no, first one saying for temporary is more than permanent, right? So temporary is, uh, that is, that is right, right? 1949 is. First one is right, second is wrong. Only. Done? Okay. Again a good question. Uh, composite number, what are composite numbers? If I talk about prime numbers, all numbers which have exactly two factors are prime number, right? So for example, 17 is a prime number because it has only two factors, 1 and 17. 19 is a prime number because it should sell two factors, 1 and 19. So one of the factors should be 1 and the other is the number itself. And the composite numbers are two numbers which have more than two factors. So one will be left out in both the cases because one has exactly one factors, right? So one cannot be prime, one cannot be composite. So one is neither prime nor composite because one has only one factors. Okay. So composite number is asking. Composite number has to be multiple of some other number except uh, apart from one and uh, the number itself, right? So I, any of these numbers. 
are a multiple of any other number or not? If yes, then that has to be a composite number, right? So if I check the first number, this is 3 is power 32 minus 1. So can you tell me 3 is power 32 minus 1 is divisible by which number? Any answer, please? Man is saying 2. Yes, because 3 is power 32 is an odd number. 1 is an odd number. Odd minus odd has to be even. An even number has to be multiple of 2 only. So first number is clearly even, which is a composite number in that case. Alright. Second, 2 to the power 35 plus 1. This becomes an odd number. Now you have it out. Odd number can be composite, can be prime. So how will we find that whether it's a composite number or not? Any answer for this? For which number it's a multiple of, uh, the second number is a multiple of which number? And tell me by logic, not by the answer key. <laughs> you must have done, have solved this question. How one is even? 3 is for 32 is an odd number, right? 1 is an odd number. Odd minus odd is always even. Savita? Hmm. Second, let's see this. Let's say uh, we have a number like a raised to the power n plus b raised to the power n. Please write down, this number is always a multiple of a plus b if n is odd. a raised to power n plus b raised to power n is always a multiple of a plus b if n is odd. Right. So using this theorem, we can simply say that 2 raised to the power 35 plus 1 raised to the power 35 will be a multiple of 2 plus 3, 2 plus 1, sorry, which is 3 only. So this number is a multiple of 3. Second is clear. A raised to the power n plus b raised to the power n is always a multiple of a plus b, and it is all so, has to be multiple of a plus b, 2 plus 1, that is 3. And uh, third is again an odd number plus odd number, which is an even number. So, third is also a composite number. So, all three are right. Okay. But this question can be solved by shortcut also. Well, so shortcut, we, all, we can say using options. First is very much clear because it is an even number. Third is very much clear because it's an even number, and none of the option talks about first and third only. So the only option left is all three. I do not bother to check second option in the here for this particular question for this this particular answers. I just mark all of three and move on. But ये नहीं सोचना पड़ेगा कि मैं कैसे प्रूव करूँ कि सेकंड वाला कंपोजिट नंबर है या नहीं. Okay. But in some of them, I be helpful, so we will definitely do this. There are two more uh, formulas here. First, I talked about this one that a is power n plus b is power n is, is always a multiple of a plus b if n is odd. Second is a is power n minus b is the power n will be multiple of a plus b only if n is even. And the same number a is power n minus b is power n is always a multiple of a minus b, whether n is even or n is odd.
so these three formulas are there right which you can solve but the the point to be remember is that n has to be two number has to be same otherwise we have to simply solve it we can not use the formula right Dinesh is asking how you are solving 3 is power 32, 2 is power 35, 5 is power, I am not solving it. N odd. 5 raised to the power any number is an odd number simply. 3 raised to the power any number is an odd number. 2 raised to the power 35 is always even. Right? Dinesh, is it clear? I need not to solve 2 is for 32, 3 is for 32 here. Clear? So let's move on. So which is left now? 54, yes. The average of first seven terms of an AP whose common difference is 2 lies between 19 and 23. If each term of this progression is an integer, then which of the following cannot be the eighth term of the AP? So, were you able to solve this question? Right, let's discuss it. See, if uh, an AP has an uh, odd number of uh, terms, right, it, here it is talking about the seven terms. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So average of seven terms of an A, which are the numbers which are in AP, will always be the fourth term. It's a property of AP. If there is an odd number, odd number of terms in AP, the average is always a middle number. So, I can say that average of the seven terms is nothing but the fourth term only. Clear? So, my average has to be this. Now, Nth term can be defined as a plus n minus 1 into d. So, fourth term is nothing but a plus 3d. Clear? And uh, it is given that d is 2. So, it, this can be written as a plus 6. And the question says me that this number mean 19 and 23 and asking for which term? 8th term. 8th term is nothing but a plus 70. a plus 70 is nothing but b equal to 2 jati hai, to a is plus 14 So, question simply puts that if a plus 6 19 or 23 ke bich mein hai, a plus 14 kahan lai karega. So, a plus 6 se a plus 14 pe aana hai, 8 add karenge hum. So, this gives you that 27 less than a plus 14 less than So, from this I can say that a plus 14 which is the 8th term lie between 27 and 31. So, the possible values can be 28, 29 and 30. Clear? So, which of these two is not there? 26 is not there. That is my answer. Right? 
Do have a doubt in this one? Anyone? Okay. Good. Fifty-five. Again, a good question. The probability of occurrence of exactly five Sundays in the month of where a week does not contain Monday. A week does not contain Monday. That means the number of days in the week has to be six. Right. So Monday will not be there except Monday all the days. That means Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be there. Right. So March. So there is there is nothing uh, mentioned about March. So we can uh, simply take the normal March, which is thirty one days there. Right. Now thirty one can be written as. Five into six plus one. Clear? Yeah. That means one week contains six days, so there will be five weeks. Plus one day. in 5 weeks there must have been 5 sundays so 5 sundays ki to guarantee hai mere ko 5 to honge hi honge the seven the remaining day can be any day right can be sunday it can be tuesday wednesday thursday and so on forth right but he is asking for exactly 5 days that means i can definitely say that this day should not be sunday so i need to find a probability nothing is visible you are talking about the writing part nanas okay the problem is that i forgot the writing pad today so uh, making a drawing here okay uh, anyways uh, i'll just uh, called about this so it is on the way only so in one or two Minutes. We can definitely do this, right? Ah, it's it has come. Just hold on, right? Thank you. Just hold on for two minutes. Okay. Right. So uh, I am saying that one week has six days. Right. And uh, so March contains thirty-one days. Thirty-one is nothing but five into six plus one, which is nothing but five weeks. Plus one day. So in five weeks, five Sundays will be there. The remaining day can be any day, including Sunday also, right? So I and in asking for the probability of exactly five days, five Sundays, right? So five Sundays. So here we will come to that. So this day sh- can not, should not be Sunday. I have to get a probability that this is not Sunday. Nahi hona तो सिक्स पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं उसमें से संडे के अलावा कुछ भी हो सकता सो फाइव और सिक्स इज द आंसर व्हाई सिक्स डेज इज टेकन बिकॉज ही सेइंग मंडे इज नॉट देयर मंडे इज नॉट देयर बिकॉज ओनली सिक्स डेज आर देयर आउट ऑफ एंड वन डे व्हिच इज मंडे इज नॉट देयर राइट अभी क्लियर है क्वेश्चन आंसर इज फाइव और सिक्स 
exactly five Sundays, right? अगर क्वेश्चन पूछता एट लीस्ट फाइव संडेज वट शुड बी दंसर एनी बड़ी कैन टेल मी मनीष वॉट आई एम सेंग इज दिस कंट्री कंटेन्स डज नॉट कंटेन मंडे दैट मीन्स वन वर्क वीक कंटेन सिक्स डेज राइट थर्टी वन डेज होते हैं मार्च में Thirty one days is nothing but five into six plus one, which is five weeks plus one day. Five weeks में पांच संडे तो पक्के ही आ जाएंगे. जो बचा हुआ दिन है, वो संडे हो भी सकता है नहीं भी सकता. आपको प्रॉपर्टी निकालनी है कि वो संडे नहीं होना चाहिए. So the total number of days is six, and not Sunday means five. So five by six will be the answer. अगर वो पूछता, exactly six days होने चाहिए थे, six Sundays. That means five Sundays will definitely be there, and the remaining has to be Sunday again. So the probability would have been one by six for six Sundays, right? So now I am asking to you that can anybody answer me that if the question would have been instead of exactly at least five Sundays, sir. Anyone, please. Manish, Manas, Manas. Yes, Manas got an answer. Also got an answer. And the answer is right. The answer is one only. At least five Sundays. So, five to hunga yonge. So probability is one only. Right. So three three questions can be done. Okay. Should I move on now? Right. So physics again a good question. This mock has some really good questions. X into y square into z cube is one forty four. One forty four can be written as one into two to the power four. Into three square. Okay, so I have to write. I have to represent these numbers uh, in this form. So I can write this as one into three square. Sorry, two into three square into two cube gives you x s two, y s three, and z s two again. Right? Can we turn this two to the power four into three square? Okay. Or we can write this as uh, See z cube. So I can take one cube from this, and other from one also. Z can be one also. It's one cube into twelve square into one. In this case, x is one, y is twelve, and z is one. So y into z here it is six, here it is twelve. Is asking for the maximum possible value. The answer is twelve only. Right? Just me. Just uh, observe this point that. It is mentioned that x and y are positive integers. It is not saying that x and y, x, y, and z are distinct positive integers. It is simply positive. So x and y can be equal. X and z, z can be equal. Okay. Right. Probability of A would be selected in interview run by three. 
probability of A selected is 1 by 3. Probability of B selected B rejected is selection of B is three by five. ये आपका हो गया selection का and rejection का हो जाएगा two by three and two by five. Right. This is for selection. This is for rejection. But at least one of the two will be selected. Right? So, अगर दोनों ही select नहीं होंगे, both not selected. का probability क्या हो जाएगा? Two by three into two by five. One minus will give you the answer. Desired answer. I guess no doubt is there. Rectangles of distinct dimensions can be constructed using all the metrics of 5 mm each. Length does not contribute anything here. I just can we assume that there are 40 metrics. So, if I am arranging, so the perimeter should be equal to 40. So, twice of L plus B should be 40 that means L plus P should be 20. So there are possibly like 119, 218, 317 <coughs> and so on till 1010. <coughs> In the previous one it is 911. After that it will not count because the rep it will be the repetition of all these numbers again the total number of cases would have been 10. Atul, which question you are talking about? Fifty-eight. You are making a, a rectangle matrix. So, using matrix, you will make the perimeter, right? Not the area. So, perimeter of the rectangle should be equal to forty. Gives you L plus B is equal to twenty. There are ten possibilities. It can be one nineteen, two eighteen, three seventeen, thirty, ten, ten, ten. So, ten possible rectangles can be there of distinct dimensions. Please mind that distinct dimension does not mean that length and breadth has to be distinct, right? Right? Done. Use of length means, Tabitha, what are you asking? Use of length, it's a question. Why? What is given? Length. Oh, length is of is not is of no significance actually. If the length would have been ten mm or two mm or one mm, how does it make a difference? It's just for the confusion. You cannot break the smash six, right? Okay. Number of polygons in number of polygon is nothing but n into n minus three upon two if n is the number of sides or vertices. So here it is written that n into n minus three upon two is given as twenty seven. Just put the values, get your answers, n is nothing but nine. 
or if you some of you is the p and c if there are n points in a line so total number of lines can be n c 2 out of these n c 2 n will be the sides so remaining will be the number of diagonals which is given as 27. So you solve this or you solve this you will get the answer ok. This is again a good question. Rohan can complete 5 by 4th of the work in 6 days. So that means Rohan can do one work in 6 into 5 by 4 days and uh, Rahul can complete the same work in 9 days. Ratio of efficiency is the inverse ratio of time. So the answer is 9 ratio 6 into 5 by 4 which gives you 6 is to 5. In this question it says Rahul does the same work. It does not mean 4 by 5 work. Manish, if, if it would have been written Rahul can complete the same in 9 days, then you are right. Rohan is saying 4 by 5th of a work and he is saying the same work complete work ok that is the difference. Rohan can complete 4 by 5 work in 6 days so complete work can be done in 6 into 5 by 4 that is clear I guess Kavita is clear and then Rohan sorry Rahul can, com can complete in this efficiency is just inversely proportional to the number of days required to finish the work. So the ratio of efficiency will be reverse 9 is to 6 into 5 by 4 gives you 6 into 5 is to 5. Clear now? It would have been written that the same in 9 days then the answer would be 3 is to 2. In that case it will be 4 by 5 of the work only. So I will just take the ratio of the 9 and 6 in that case. I guess it is clear now right? Any order 61, anyone? It is a very easy question, so I guess this must have been done. If you have any doubt, I will discuss it, otherwise, I will skip this. No. Okay. 62 is same. Again, same logic there. 63 should have been discussed. I uh, experiment exactly one of the three events name A, B, C, heteromagnetine the odds against happening of uh, A is to B is uh, 8 is to 5 and 6 is 7 respectively. Always see this. If I say odds in favor of A is A is to B. So odds in favor always represent probability of happening the event ratio probability of not happening the event and vice versa odds against is nothing but probability of not happening ratio probability of happening. Right. So, using first I can say probability of happening is A upon A plus B and probability of not happening is B upon A plus B and here it is reverse not happening is A upon B and happening is B upon A plus B. So, it is that probability of against odds against A is 8 by 5 that means not happening ki probability is 8 upon 13 probability of A not happening is 8 upon 13. 
सो प्रॉबर्टी ऑफ हैपनिंग ए इज फाइव और थर्टीन सिमिलरली प्रॉबर्टी ऑफ नॉट हैपनिंग बी इज सिक्स बाय थर्टीन सो प्रॉबर्टी ऑफ हैपनिंग बी इज सेवन बाय थर्टीन एंड इज सेंग दैट एग्जैक्ट ऑफ दीज थ्री इवेंट्स विल हैपन right that means their summation of the prob- probability would have been 1 so probability of happening c is nothing but 1 minus 5 by 13 minus 7 by 13 is 1 by 13 so probability of happening is 1 by 13 not happening is 12 by 13 रेशो अगेंस्ट विल बी दिस रेशो दिस इज नथिंग बट ट्वेल्व इज टू वन क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू सिक्स आई गेस मैथ्स पार्ट इज फिनिश्ड विल कम टू एल आर पार्ट नाउ एंड देन मूव टू आर सी Question number fifteen. To fund a project, one must have gold. To fund a project, one must have gold. Yeah. All funded projects are silver. Will be like this. It can be like this also. Okay. Now he's saying some brass is tin, no brass is gold. Some brass is tin, no brass is gold. So there is nothing common between this and this. Now see the conclusion. Some silver is not gold. Some silver is not gold. It looks okay here, but is false here. So it is false. He says some funded projects are silver. Some funded projects are silver. It's clearly right here. Second is third says some gold is not brass. Some gold is not brass. is again a valid statement and is asking for not a valid conclusion so my right answer is a then it is clear now okay 69 doubt No. Seventeenth. Seventeenth, eighteen. Turn it out. Nineteen. Nineteen. Seventeen. Out. Not. Not. Okay. Let's see. Nineteen. Only human can create metal. Only A is B. Only A is B means all B are A. Okay. So only human can get metals like this. 
right some human who are metal who get metal are people so some human who get metal are people all people who get metal are assertive so this part all people who get metal are assertive clear this is the diagram now see this conclusions all human metal are assertive all human who get metal are assertive is wrong some human who get metal are assertive this is right he is talking about this part only a and b should be overlapping why a is saying all humans who get metal are assertive manish a and b should be overlapping why a, you are talking about the conclusion right when we say only human can get metal so that means all metals should be inside human the explanation what i am saying is the first statement is only human can get metal so metal will come inside human will get outside then some human who get metal are assertive sorry some human who get metal are people there are some human this part <coughs> sorry who get metal are as people clear got it okay got it now nineteen is done Twenty-two, twentieth, no doubt. Twenty-one, no doubt. Seventeen, yeah, Dinesh. First thing, nobody replied. No paper is crisp. No paper is crisp. Some chips are crisp. some chips are crisps all chips are loose all chips are loose and some loose are papers so it will look like this so all chips are loose and some loose are paper see this some paper is chips some paper is chip not valid some loose is crisps some loose is crisps is definitely valid all loose are chips all loose are chips we cannot say no crisp is chip no crisp is chip is again wrong second answer then it is clear now twenty two only when politicians experience the real india will it improve faster it's a consist logically consistency so and the condition is only if according to only if if effect will happen cause will happen if this cause will not happen effect will not happen right so this is the cause and this is the effect so i can say that if effect will happen cause will happen so if what i can say is that india will improve faster when politicians experience the real india this is the conclusion i can draw okay which is clearly given in the second one in order to improve real india at faster rate the politicians should this part should come earlier that's what i'm saying and this part should come in the later statement effect give you cause atul sir bol rahe hain hindi mein bhi 
अतुल जब भी ओनली फॉर या ओनली वैन वाला कंक्लूजन आता क्वेश्चन आता है तो उसमें इफेक्ट से कॉज मिलता है और इफेक्ट नॉट से कॉज कॉज नॉट से इफेक्ट नॉट मिलता है तो यहाँ पे कॉज क्या है आपका ओनली वैन पॉलिटिशियन एक्सपीरियंस इंडिया इफेक्ट क्या है विल इू फास्टर राइट सो इफेक्ट पहले होना चाहिए कॉज बाद में होना चाहिए तो पहले इफेक्ट आएगा इट विल इंप्रूव फास्टर देन वी कैन से पॉलिटिशियन शुड एक्सपीरियंस इट सो बी इज राइट ए इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द एफर्ट्स वेर इट इज रिटर्न अबाउट द एफर्ट्स कविता क्वेश्चन डज नॉट टॉक्स अबाउट एफर्ट दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम विद स्टेटमेंट राइट सॉर क्लियर नाउ ट्वेंटी सेकेंड Twenty third in doubt. Twenty third, okay. Dinesh has a doubt. India is still grappling with the fallout of the decade-long, seemingly unstoppable decline of the oil sector, once a driver to growth of the backflow of the economy. Okay. See, uh, what is the statement saying? The oil sector. was the back backdrop of the economy earlier for iran uh, but but from a decade ye 10 saal se usme decline aa raha hai that's what he saying right tha tha abhi 10 saal se uske andar decline ho raha hai kam ho raha hai dheere dheere so which statement to talks about this First, it gives you the decline of the oil sector in Iran has created irreversible problems. ये तो कहीं नहीं लिखा गया है. I cannot conclude this. कि ये ठीक ही नहीं हो सकता है. ऐसा तो नहीं बोल रहा है वो. B बोल रहा है for a decade, uh, Iran has faced decline of its oil sector, which was the basis of its growth and economy. That the same thing is talking about. Talking about. He is saying Iran has struggled with the decline of its oil sector at regular interval. Regular interval कहीं नहीं बोला गया. He is talking about 10 year long, 10 years data only. D is saying the fall of the decade had lo long decline in the oil sector has completely transformed the Indian Iranian economy is not mentioned again. The only option left is B. I highlighted the problems in the statements, right? रिवर्सिबल प्रॉब्लम ए कैन नॉट बी द आंसर ए सेइंग ये ठीक ही नहीं हो सकता है आप ये कैसे बोल सकते हो ये ठीक ही नहीं हो सकता है जस्ट सेइंग कि दस साल से कम ही आ रही है दिनेश तो सिंपली ये बोल रहा है कि दस साल से ऑयल सेक्टर कब गिर रहा है डिक्लाइन हो रहा है वो ये प्रॉब्लम ठीक नहीं होगी ये कैसे कह सकते हैं आप रिवर्सिबल का मतलब ठीक नहीं होना क्लियर ओके मनीष मींस विच इज स्टेट इज इन द प्रोमाइस लॉजिकली कंक्लूजन इज व्हाट इज गिवन इन द प्रोमाइस व्हाट कैन बी कंक्लूडेड फ्रॉम दैट बी समहाउ लुक Looks like the restate. Best option is B only. If you see B, it's not exactly conclusion. It's a restatement. But none of the other option is definitely right. I have to choose the best option. The B is the right answer, right? So done with this part now. Now we move to RC and decision making. So I'll just call. I'll be shake to take R C and decision making, right? Be patient, please.
What will be the Venn diagram? Venn diagram क्या हो? उबे पहले का प्रश्न हो? इसका Venn diagram चल रहा है? तन्मय then may which for which question you require the Venn diagram? Then may if you are there, please previous question paper. That's a critical reasoning question, dear. That does not require a, a Venn diagram. That is just simple statement and analysis of the statement. All right. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we are now going to start the discussion for the verbal section, that is reading comprehension and whatever has been left by Tarun sir. Okay. So we begin with passage one. So is there something, any any particular doubts with the passage one, the passage first? Question three, okay. Question three says, consider the following assumption. The government is partially to blame for the crunch that uh, companies have faced in getting funds from within the country, right? And the second says, the government has taken policy decisions that have placed the country as second fastest growing world economy, okay? I will have to see that which of the following above assumption is or are valid, okay? So the part when I'm saying that uh, as we as we begin the passage, okay, as we begin the passage here, the government is worried that an outflow of no wait, yeah, Indian companies have expanded at home and abroad during the go-go years of 2008 faced some tough choices. Okay, a big chunk of money they borrowed overseas comes up for redemption over the next two years, and with the economic tanking, some of them are finding it tough to pay up. Those that issued blah blah blah. Yes, all of these things are happening now. Why are these happening? Why? Because the Indian companies expanded at home, right, and abroad. And what did they do? What did they do? They what? A big chunk of money they borrowed overseas. Now they it needs to be redeemed. Fine. So who is to blame for this? The first part is the companies. Okay. As we move ahead in the passage, what we see is uh, the government's recent. Uh, decisions on cutting the diesel subsidy and allowing more foreign investments in retail insurance, pension and aviation have set the ball, ball rolling. The markets in line further, they would expect that the government delivers on its promise of further liberalization and prudent economic management. So what has happened out here is that the what whatever is the whatever the question, whatever the problem was, has not been taken care by the government. As we move ahead, it also says that uh India incorporation deserves a helping hand from government during a lean patch. Companies are starved of credit because government is borrowing too much from the household savings. Right? So there is a problem for which there are two parties which are there are two parties which are responsible. One is the company itself, second is the government. Right. So now what happens is that can I say that both are responsible? Yes, both are responsible. It means that one of them is partial. I mean it means that both of them are partial. So yes, I can definitely say that uh when it comes to the question that the government is partially to blame for the crunch that companies have faced in getting funds within the country, yes it is, but when I see second, the government has taken policy decisions that have played the economy. We come to the last, para, the last part of the question where it says both monetary and fiscal policy Right, somewhere. From here, both monetary and fiscal policy inimical. Inimical means something that is not suitable, okay, to the interest of Indian corporation, which has been spearheading growth in what was still recently world's second fastest growing economy. So there is no mention that the government was there, which was responsible for this, right? It was because the private companies were themselves doing it. So therefore, question number three, I can only be sure about the first part, but the second part I cannot. So my answer accordingly for the third part goes as A, alpha. Okay, next question.
fifth question. Okay. Okay, it says that which of the following options have not been stated as a reason for clemency for Abdul Guru, right? So, what are the reasons which are there, which which make me say that these are not the now for this question there is a problem with this question. The that is that is question number five, and uh, the 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 question that is asking which of the following options have not been. But the question, if you look at the question and the and the answer that has been given in the mock, there is a there is a slight dichotomy. Maybe maybe discuss. Okay. If 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 I if I look at the question that is question number five, there is a dichotomy in the answer. So this question number five is debatable. We have put this question to be corrected and sensitized. So on this question number five, I cannot comment why because the answer that is given in the in according to the according to the question is actually incorrect. If I if I look at the reasons that have been stated, so let's not. Put ourselves on the question number five because uh, it has gone for some correction. Next question, if I am able to get it right, is seven. Uh, Atul, uh, Hindi me I am not competent uh, with with Hindi. Main Hindi me har cheez explain nahi kar paunga. I am so sorry for that. Question seven, there is a doubt. It can be inferred that corporal punishment, right? So I have got a question, and it says includes only physical punishment, physical punishment, and mental harassment is a violation of principles of education, and something that says that cannot be determined. Now, now let's let's go back to the passage. If we go to passage, then what happens? 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 There is no statutory definition of corporal punishment. यहाँ से देखिए, ठीक है? The Right to Education Act 2009, the Right to Education Act 2009 merely states no child shall be subjected to physical punishment or mental harassment. Now यहाँ पे एक जानने वाली चीज़ ये है, अगर मैं कह रहा हूँ x या y z करता है, ठीक है? या फिर x या y z को करता है. तो क्या मैं किसी एक के लिए बोल सकता हूं कि एक्स जी या वाई जी को करता है नहीं बोल सकता हूं क्योंकि यहां पे या की स्थिति है और मैं क्या बोल सकता हूं सिर्फ यही बोल सकता हूं एक्स शायद जेड को कर सकता है या वाई शायद जेड को कर सकता है अगर मैं इसको एग्जांपल में तब्दील करूं तो कुछ ऐसा होगा राम या रही मार्केट को जाते हैं ठीक है तो अगर मैं बोलू क्या मैं बोल सकता हूं कि राम मार्केट को जाता है फिर तो रहीम भी बोलेगा साहब मैं भी तो जा सकता हूं वैसे वैसा भी सही हुआ मैं बोलूंगा कि राम या रही मार्केट जाता है तो रही मार्केट जाता है क्या मैं बोल सकता हूँ राम मार्केट जाएगा जा रहा है नहीं बोल सकता हूँ डेफिनेटली क्या बोल सकता हूँ मैं एक ही बात बोल सकता हूँ कि राम शायद मार्केट जा रहा होगा या रहीम शायद मार्केट जा रहा होगा तो यहाँ पे सबसे बड़ी बात जो कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट को आर ने डिफाइन करने की कोशिश की है वो सिर्फ ये कर रहा है कि नो चाइल्ड शैल बी सब्जेक्टेड टू फिजिकल पनिशमेंट और मेंटल हेरासमेंट इन दोनों में से मैं किसी एक को पिक नहीं कर सकता हूँ सिंपली फॉर द रीजन दैट इट्स एन और स्टेटमेंट Just a minute, please. Okay. So, pehla chala gaya. Includes only for physical punishment. Includes both physical and mental harassment. Nahi bol sakta hoon, kyunki wahan pe aur hi istamal kiya hua hai. Thik hai? So, aur aur and mein antar hota hai. C keh raha hai, is a violation of principle of education. Yeh kahi paragraph mein mentioned nahi hai. To mera answer kya bata hai? Cannot be determined. Okay. Uh, what is the next question after question number seven? Question number eight and ten. Okay.
फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन वुड द ऑथर अग्री विथ ठीक है तो मुझे ये देखना है इस तरह के क्वेश्चन में क्या करते हैं uh, एक मिनट किसी का सवाल है कुछ जस्ट अ मिनट दिनेश बोल रहे हैं कि दिस इज द फर्स्ट डिस्कशन आई एम अटेंडिंग सो प्लीज टेल अबाउट द फुल अप्रोच अबाउट आरसी दिनेश आई वुड से दैट दिस इज नॉट अ क्लास ऑफ आरसी राइट सो आई कैन नॉट टेक एन एंटायर क्लास ऑन आरसी हाउ एवर एज आई गो थ्रू द क्वेश्चन वॉट एवर कंसेप्ट आई कैन डिस्कस आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग इट ओके ओके या विवेक आई गॉट क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन ऑल्सो सो लेट मी डील विथ एट फर्स्ट एंड देन आई एल मूव टू टेंथ ओके सो एट सेव विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन वुड द ऑथर एग्री विथ इट्स can it can i also look at this as a, as a question where it is asking that i have to find one through which the author does not agree so it means that actually i'm looking for an odd one out okay now the eighth question says that schools are are institution where children are taught moral values theek hai which of the following would the author agree with to iske sath wo agree karega kyunki ye kahin pe likha hua nahi hai pure passage mein ki school jo hai wo aapko मॉरल वैल्यू पढ़ाते हैं एक बार देख लीजिए पैसेज को वो क्या बता रहा है स्कूल इज अ प्लेस वेर द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ ए चाइल्ड टेक्स प्लेस समवेयर हियर एंड द ग्रूमिंग ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इज ज्वाइंट एफर्ट ऑफ स्कूल्स एंड पेरेंट्स आल्सो पेरेंट्स आर नाउ क्लीनली इंटरेस्टेड बहुत एक्सेट्रा बहुत कुछ लिखा हुआ है लेकिन वो कहीं ये नहीं कह रहा है कि स्कूल एक ऐसी जगह है जहां पर मॉरल एजुकेशन मुझे प्रोवाइड करती है तो ऑब्वियसली बात है कि उसके साथ ऑथर इतफाक नहीं रखेगा सेकेंड कह रहा है प्रिवेंशन ऑफ कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट इज फाइनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ टीचर्स टीचर के ऊपर फाइनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है नहीं या नहीं ये फिर कहीं पे नहीं लिखा हुआ है एक ऑप्शन जो आता है सामने वो ये है कि प्रीवियस वाले पेज पे जाएंगे हम या यहां देखिए द मिनिस्ट्री गाइडलाइंस पुट द ओनर्स ऑफ प्रिवेंटिंग कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट ऑन द हेड्स ऑफ स्कूल्स सो यानी कि ओनर्स किसके पास है हेड्स ऑफ स्कूल का क्या मैं श्योर हो सकता हूं कि हेड ऑफ स्कूल का मतलब टीचर्स है नहीं कर सकता हूं बिकॉज बोथ आर डिफरेंट दे मे बी डिफरेंट दे माइट नॉट बी डिफरेंट तो उस केस में मैं ये जो आठवां का जो ऑप्शन है जो कह रहा है कि प्रिवेंशन ऑफ कॉर्पोरल पनिशमेंट इज अ फाइनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ टीचर्स ये मैं श्योरिटी के साथ नहीं बोल सकता हूं तो ब्रावो मतलब जो बी ऑप्शन है वो भी चला गया चार्ली मतलब जो सी ऑप्शन है वो कह रहा है स्कूल असाइंस आर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर चाइल्ड बिहेवियर ऑन हिज और पेरेंट्स ये पार्ट लास्ट पैराग्राफ में डिस्कस की हुई है और डेल्टा कह रहा है पेरेंट्स आर मेड अफेयर ऑफ वेरियस डेंजर्स देयर चाइल्ड फेस वाइल एट स्कूल डेंजर के बारे में कुछ नहीं कहा गया पैसेज में सिर्फ इतना कहा गया है कि आपका जो बच्चा है वो क्या क्या नहीं करना चाहिए विच इज द स्टूडेंट मस्ट स्टिक टू अ प्रॉपर ड्रेस कोड इन स्कूल प्रोहिबिटेड फ्रॉम यू Using cell phone in sign in school abuses, sorry school buses इस तरह की चीजें वो नहीं करेगा तो कहीं पैसेज में ये नहीं लिखा हुआ कि वो डेंजर है ठीक है तो मैं ये नहीं कंस्यू कर सकता हूं कि वो डेंजर की बात कर रहा है तो इसका मतलब आंसर जो मेरा इस क्वेश्चन का हो रहा है वो हो रहा है सी यानी कि चार्ली द स्कूल असाइन द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ ए चाइल्ड बिहेवियर ऑन पेरेंट्स द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट आई गॉट इज क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन With reference to the above passage, consider the following statement. Pehla, fragmentation of forest can be detrimental to the habitat. ठीक है यहाँ पे ध्यान देने वाला शब्द है can. Fragmentation of forest can be detrimental to the habitat. यानी कि हो भी सकता है नहीं भी हो सकता है. Okay? मैं क्या करूँगा? मैं passage में चलूँगा. Passage में क्या ढूँढूँगा? Fragmentation की बात कहाँ की गई है? तो fragmentation की बात opening paragraph में की गई है और कह रहा है fragmentation of forest often leads to habitat loss as well as species loss. This directly or indirectly affect the functional etc. लिखा हुआ है अब ध्यान देने वाली बात है फ्रेगमेंटेशन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट ऑफन लीड्स ऑफन का मतलब ये नहीं होता है कि हमेशा होता है ऑफन का मतलब होता है कि अक्सर होता है सो so, यानी कि मैं इसमें श्योर नहीं हो सकता हूं कि हमेशा होता है इसका मतलब मैं इसके ऊपर क्या लगाऊंगा कैन तो फ्रेगमेंटेशन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट कैन बी डिटर्मेंटल टू दैबिटेट अगर इस ऑप्शन में विल होता तो ये ऑप्शन गलत होता पहला वाला क्योंकि मैं श्योरिटी की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं यहां प्रोबेबिलिटी की बात कर रहा हूं जो कि मेरा पैसेज भी कह रहा है सेकंड है डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट डायरेक्टली इंपैक्ट्स द न्यूट्रिएंट साइकिल ठीक है तो मुझे करना क्या है पूरे पैसेज में देखना है मुझे न्यूट्रियन साइकिल कहां पर है और उसके ऊपर क्या असर पड़ रहा है तो न्यूट्रियन साइकिल में ढूंढना स्टार्ट करता हूं तो मुझे कहीं दिखता है आ, ये रहा 
इनिशिएशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग उसके बाद है कहां पे फिर नीचे यहां पे न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग ठीक है इन सब जगह न्यूट्रेंट साइक आगे भी निकले देख लेता हूं यहां न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग का क्या जिक्र हो रहा है इट सेज एज द साइकिलिंग ऑफ एसेंशियल न्यूट्रेंट डिपेंड अपन द सॉइल एंड लिटर फॉल वेन फॉरेस्ट आर डिस्ट्रॉइड द वेजिटेशन इन दट पर्टिकुलर एरिया ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉइड दट प्रोवाइड इन इनिशिएशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग दस हैम्परिंग द न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग ठीक है क्या कह रहा है द वेजिटेशन इन दट पर्टिकुलर एरिया इज ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉइड दैट प्रोवाइड द इनिशिएशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग और साइकिलिंग ऑफ द एसेंशियल न्यूट्रेंट डिपेंड्स अपॉन सॉइल एंड लिटर फॉल ठीक है तो सॉइल और लिटर फॉल दोनों के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है और मेरा ऑप्शन क्या कह रहा है मुझे डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट डायरेक्टली इंपैक्ट द न्यूट्रेंट साइकिल तो डायरेक्टली इंपैक्ट तो उसको नहीं कर रहा है वो ठीक है सो मेरा आंसर क्या होगा इसका टेंथ का अल्फा यानी कि सर सिर्फ पहला वाला सही है वन वाला सही है सेवेंथ लाइन मनीष सेवेंथ लाइन में क्या है वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन या इट से डिस्ट्रॉइड दैट प्रोवाइड द इनिशिएशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट साइकिल मतलब क्या वेन फॉरेस्ट आर डिस्ट्रॉइड द वेजिटेशन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया इज ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉइड ठीक है दैट प्रोवाइड इनिशिएशन ऑफ न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग लेकिन उसके ऊपर वो क्या कह रहा है कि एज अ साइकिलिंग ऑफ एसेंशियल न्यूट्रिएंट्स यानी कि न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग डिपेंड्स अपॉन द सॉइल एंड लिटर फॉल यानी कि वो दो चीजों पर डिपेंड कर रहा है ठीक है और मेरा पैरा कह रहा है डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट डायरेक्टली इम्पैक्ट द न्यूट्रेंट साइकिलिंग डायरेक्टली इम्पैक्ट हो रहा है या नहीं हो रहा है आप खुद बताओ या दिनेश आई वॉज एक्चुअली ट्राइंग टू से दैट इन इंग्लिश इट सेल्फ ओके बट देर आर फ्यू पीपल हु वॉन्टेड इट टू बी इन हिंदी सो आई वॉज ट्राइंग माई बेस्ट वॉटर आई डू विथ हिंदी ओके सो आफ्टर क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन क्विक इलेवेंथ ओके इलेवन से सॉइल फॉर्मेशन इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ लिटर फॉल ठीक है ओके एंड हिंडेंस इज अ फंक्शनल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट सो आई हैव टू चेक दैट विच ऑफ दीज स्टेटमेंट्स आर वैलिड लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट वन सॉइल फॉर्मेशन इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ लिटर फॉल तो वॉट आर द वर्ड दैट आई हैव टू लुक इन द पैसेज सॉइल फॉर्मेशन एंड डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ लिटर फॉल ओके सो लेट्स गेट बैक टू द पैसेज एंड लुक फॉर सॉइल डिकम्पोजिशन ओके एंड वी कम हेयर समवेयर विच फेज decomposition of litter fall which produces organic matter is an important factor for soil formation as well as nutrient cycling process now the thing out here is decomposition of litter fall which produces an organic matter is an important factor now uh, let me ask you uh, all a few questions if i say uh, uh, every player of the indian cricket team is an important uh, is an important asset right now if i say this can i pick any one particular person and say that uh, what ever happens to the result responsible for that or the result is dependent upon you i cannot say that right but why because the, there are others also who are important now if i change this sentence and i say that sachin tendulkar is the most important uh, part of the indian cricket team now if i ask that can i say now that yes the result is dependent upon sachin tendulkar can i ho hold sachin tendulkar responsible for it why because i have said that he is the most important one uh, uh, a parallel example can be if i say that uh, illiteracy is the most important cause of naxalism now if i were to treat naxalism what is that one thing that i'll correct that is illiteracy now if i change it and i say that illiteracy is an important reason for him then i know that there are other reasons also which are important i just cannot say that uh, illiteracy is dependent of uh, sorry naxalism is dependent upon illiteracy right so that's the thing out here in the in the 11th question which says that soil formation is dependent it is not dependent why because the sentence that is given is that soil formation is an important right so since it is an important it is not the most important so therefore i cannot say that alpha is correct however if i look at b which says hindrance to the nutrient dynamics is a functional aspect of the forest what do i have to look hindrance to nutrient dynamics okay and functional aspects so i have to find these thing in the passages so if i go to the passage hindrance 
Yeah, I find it. It's it's here someplace. And it talks house. This directly or indirectly affect the functional aspect of the forest. That is mainly cause hindrance to nutrient dynamics. Okay. So this directly or indirectly. So no matter what happens like this or that, it will affect. So one thing I know that it will affect. What will affect? It will affect the functional aspect of the forest. If I have used the word this word that is the moment I've used the word that is it means nothing but equal okay so what it is saying that directly or indirectly affects the functional aspect of forest which is equal to mainly cause hindrance of to nutrient dynamics so bang on what I see is hindrance to nutrient dynamics is a functional aspect of forest it means it is correct so my answer should be B which is bravo that is only the second part is correct. Right? Not the first one. Next question, please. <laughs> Seems that the entire passage is problematic. Okay. Let's move to 12th question. And it says, with reference to the above passage, consider the following. Litter fall selectively impacts tree nutrition growth patterns and forest production. Okay. And the second says, Nutrient conditions on litter fall may result in improvement of forest management. Now remember, uh, this is something that I would like to share with all of you. In an option, if there is a very extreme option, right, it is never correct. It is seldom correct, I can say. Not never correct, but it is seldom correct. Look at this. It says literal litter fall selectively impacts tree nutrition. What happened? The litter fall will only impact tree nutrition growth patterns and forest production. Is it mentioned a passage? You might be having your physical copies in front of you. Please go through the passage and see that is it written there? Little fall, little fall will only affect tree nutrition growth patterns and forest production. Well, I'll tell you the answer is no. Okay. And if I look at the second one, it says nutrient content studies on litter fall may result in improvement of forest management. So what is the word that I have to look? The word that I have looked to is forest improvement of forest management okay and I find forest management it is somewhere here okay And it says, studies on nutrient content on litter fall give functional state of the forest and can be used to improve forest management and production. That's what my option also says that... Sorry. Nutrient content studies on litter fall may result in improve, improvement of forest, uh, product, uh, forest management. So I've got that as the correct one. Uh, someone says Manish writes it is written affected by litter fall. Well, let's read it where it is. Fourteen. Three. Three. Six. Six. Three. Nine. Nine plus three. Twelve. Twelve plus thirteen. Any next Therefore, tree nutrition growth pattern and forest production is affected by litter fall. Okay, now I will have to read line before also because therefore it is written. It means that something should have happened before this. Okay, it says decomposition of litter fall which produces organic matter is an important factor for soil formation as well as nutrient cycling processes. Again, the, the same thing, it is an important part, right? Decomposition of litter fall. Therefore, tree nutrition nutrition growth patterns and forest production is affected by litter fall whereas my question was asking that litter fall selectively impacts tree nutrition growth patterns and forest production right Well, you have done. Answer is B. Yeah. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine. Now. 
uh, well there is something for a 13 also so at least let me finish this this and then we move 13th 13 says uh, soil nutrient conditions are an indicator of nutrient use efficiency in litter fall now what is that I have to find is efficiency in litter fall okay so soil nutrient conditions are an indicator of nutrient use useful efficiency excuse me just a moment yeah uh, please say yes. I mean, please type yes if I am. Okay. So, 13 says so soil nutrient conditions are an indicator of nutrient use efficiency. Now, the thing that I have to find out is efficiency in litter falls. Okay. So, I move back to the passage and look for the word efficiency. not here yeah and I find it here it says however the index of nutrient use efficiency in litter fall the word to be noted is can can means there is a probable case okay so if there is a probable case can I say that wish they could can I say that soil nutrient conditions are in of efficiency of course no okay because we are talking about a probability out there and this is talking about a definite occurrence so definitely one goes for a toss if I look at the second one which says energy transference uh, from living biological components comprises litter fall so what do I have to find the in the passage I have to find the word energy transference so wherever that is let's try to find out Yeah, we find it here and it says nutrients and energy transference from living biological components to the soil is closely related to litter fall and is starting point for nutrient cycling. Okay, so the word to note out here is closely related. Okay, now this is as good as or as bad as saying that, uh, as good or as bad as saying that. Uh, dinosaurs are closely related to birds. Now, can I say that dinosaurs are birds? Of course not, right? So, since it is saying closely related, I cannot be definite that this is what the, it is. So, therefore, if I look at the uh, next option of 13 question, it says energy transference from living biological components comprises litter fall. No, I cannot say it closely related to it. So, therefore, it cannot. I cannot be definite while I am saying that it comprises litter fall. So, my answer should be. Uh, 13th right my answer should be D delta that is neither 1 or 2 Kavita I am so sorry since you missed it I don't know from where you missed I cannot go back because I have to move with everyone ahead okay 13th or we move to Kavita I have discussed 11th so sorry 12, 13, 14th okay 14 talks about the constraint on internal fluxes of carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus at ecosystem scale reflect due to constitution of litter fall. Okay, so if this is the question, what I have to find in the passage is the occurrence of carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus. Okay, so let's get back, let's get back to the passage and look for C, P and P. It's easy to see that, yeah, we have it here. Litter fall cons constitutes a major portion of nutrient cycling between plants and soil thus reflecting constraints on internal fluxes of C and P at ecosystem scale okay so it's a major portion of nutrient cycling right but the question is sorry but the question is the constraint on internal fluxes of C and P ecosystem scale reflect due to constitution of litter fall right so it means what I'm trying to say is that there is there is an inter internal flux of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, and it 
it is it reflects due to the constitutional litter fall which is there second phase <coughs> second phase the pattern and rate of nutrient cycling is controlled by availability of nutrients right whereas if i if i remember the passage correctly and since you have the physical copies in front of you you will see that there is also one more factor affecting it and that is seasonality right as they change so there is since there is one more factor which is saying that nutrient cycling uh, there is one more factor other than uh, pattern and rate of nutrient cycling which which is controlled by availability of nutrients so i cannot be sure for that so my answer should be uh one only not two so my answer should be a that is uh, 14th ka hona chahiye a alpha which is one only do we still have questions from this passage there's a 15 okay 15 has been discussed fine uh we need to move to 68 60 67 68 69 as uh, dinesh you were there right dinesh you are still there please say a yes i mean please type a yes Okay, Dinesh, I think you're not there. Fine. Okay, so next question after fourteenth, twenty third. Okay. Twenty third has been done by uh, Mr. Tarun. Tarun sir. Oh Dinesh, you are back. Okay, sixty-seven. But before that, uh, I have a request for twenty-eight and thirty. Since I was calling you to, to type, you didn't. So let me discuss it, and then I'll move to sixty-seven. Yeah, Dinesh, I'll take sixty-five also. okay question number 28 and it talks about as the new dimension of globalization is an outcome of different macroeconomic management scenario if i look at the question if i go back at the passage what do i have to find macroeconomic management scenario okay so and new dimension so these are the words that i have to look for in the passage so let's find them yeah i see it here uh from the spillover effect of monetary policy choices and other uncertainties in the advanced financial market further impact has changed it and made the task of macroeconomic ma management difficult economic right this has brought now my question is what is this this is standing for this particular thing task of macroeconomic management difficult in many emerging economies so this has brought out new dimension of globalization right so that is task of macroeconomic management has uh, has made it difficult in emerging economies which has brought out a new dimension of globalization so which is bang on with the first option which says that uh, the new dimension of globalization is outcome of a difficult macroeconomic management scenario so one is done let's move to second one which says monetary policy in a set of countries can potentially affect other countries well it's there in the last paragraph i suppose if i remember the passage correctly mm. no just a minute i think i was wrong there kya uh if i read below this where easy monetary policies in policy in one set of countries may result in inflation elsewhere due to cross border capital flows so it means that it will affect may result in inflation elsewhere so something might happen somewhere else okay so in that light if i look at the uh, second statement it says the monetary policy in a set of countries can potentially affect other countries so yes definitely i can say it can potentially affect other countries so the answer for this should be uh both 1 and 2 which is charlie so answer should be 28th charlie okay so i hope that's okay kavita and i move now move to 30th 
right? Because after 28, I got a request for 30, so let's move to 30, which says, uh, okay, uh, consider the following statement, enter a hub of financial service. Now, that is there mentioned in the passage, direct question, which, th which says that uh, uh, advanced economies are a hub of financial services, okay? And the second is demographics and size of domestic markets are crucial for growth in emerging economies. Now, what is it saying is that demographics and size of the domestic market are crucial for growth in emerging economies. So, domestic market and emerging economies. So, the, uh, the discussion about that happens somewhere in the last... It says that... Um, yeah, the last part. The last part. Even in the emerging economies, including India, witnessed a slow, uh, slow growth in 2011. Growth prospect of most of these economies remain robust in medium to long term due to various factors such as demographics and size of the domestic market, apart from high rates of investment, investment and savings. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, even if the emerging economies, including India, witness a slow growth prospect of most of these economies remain robust in medium to due to various uh, factors such as demographic size and domestic market okay and uh, and 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 anywhere else do I have something for this mm, no let's look at the option that I have demographic and size of domestic markets are crucial for growth in emerging economies it is not saying that it is crucial Right? Crucial means imperative, that is important. So it has not been discussed. So my answer should be 30th uh, just one, that is A alpha. Dinesh has said uh, 65 before that. So before Kavita, we move to 30 or that. But if it is from the same passage, I will discuss it now. Oh, yes, it is. 31. With reference to the above passage, the following statements. 31 says incremental growth is exclusive domain of developing e countries. In nowhere it is mentioned in the passage that it is just an exclusive. Remember, I discussed something that whenever you get uh, an exact, uh, sorry, an extreme option in the in the in the passage, it is not a, the correct answer. Right. So I cannot say it is the exclusive domain of developing countries. Now, if you wish to check this, go to the part and see it. Is second statement the uh, extreme in question number 30? Demographic and size of market are crucial. Yes, it is talking about crucial, right? Whereas if it was crucial, it should have said that it is an it is a very important part or it is the most important part. Then only I can say crucial. So therefore, always try to check it. Right, Tanmoy? Okay. So 31st, uh, we are doing the 31st ka pehla goes for a toss. Second says the monetary policy choices have led to an unpredictable capital flow scenario which is there discussed in the first part itself, right? Okay, so in 31st, for first option given again. No, Kavita, it, it nowhere talks about that it is the exclusive domain. Um, the, 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 the stress is on the word exclusive. Exclusive means something that stands out. So kindly check that. Is it saying that it is standing out? Fine. So, 31st, my answer goes for Bravo B, which is monetary policy choices have led to an unpredictable capital flow scenario, which is directly lifted from the passage. Okay. 31 ke baad ek aur request IT 32 ki, so move to 32. Okay. Uh, the question is, I think it was about the first first idea, first passage ka main idea. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. Okay. So, it can be inferred that the main idea of the first passage is, okay. Achha, jabhi bhi sawal aata hai main idea ka of the first paragraph ya main idea of the passage ye sawal aise bhi aa sakta hai ki crux of the passage kya hai gist of the passage kya hai central theme kya hai topic kya de ye sare ke sare sawal ek hi jaise sawal hai ek hi thali ke chatte batte okay so abhi sawal pooch raha hai the question is main idea of the first passage which is equal to central theme of the first passage uh, crux of the first passage, gist of the first passage, what can be the suitable title for the first passage, it all is the same. Okay. Now, let's go to the first part. Now, whenever I deal, whenever I have to deal with such a question, I will always remember. Now, again, I cannot go and discuss the internal uh, intricacies of this particular part. Why? Because this is just a, this is not a reading comprehension class. This is a test paper discussion. So, remember that whenever I, disc whenever I solve such a question, 
I always read the first paragraph and the last paragraph. This is where I guess the central theme or the gist of the paragraph. If I'm told to read about the first paragraph, I'll just read the first few lines of the first paragraph and the last line of the first paragraph. That will give me, I will have to combine both and then the answer will tell me that what is the main idea of the first paragraph. So let's go to the first para. This is the first para. Let's read the first few lines. It was 2006, no skywalk had been built and yet skywalks were shaping the reality of the city. यानी कि 2006 था कोई स्काईवॉक बना नहीं था येट स्काईवॉक्स वेर शेपिंग द रियलिटी द सिटी सो समथिंग दैट वाज नॉट देयर बट स्टिल दे वेर शेपिंग अप राइट देयर इमिनेंट अराइवल शेप्ड हाउ पीपल इंटरप्रेटेड स्ट्रीट्स देयर यूज एंड पोटेंशियल डिजाइन इंटरवेंशन एंड कैन ट्रांसफॉर्म देम सो देयर इमिनेंट अराइवल मींस द आइडियोलॉजी ऑफ स्काईवॉक्स राइट इट शेप्ड अप हाउ पीपल इंटरप्रेटेड स्ट्रीट स्ट्रीट्स को लोग कैसे देखते हैं उनका काम क्या होता है पोटेंशियल डिजाइन में अगर मैं चेंज करूं तो कैसे वो उसको ट्रांसफॉर्म कर सकता है ठीक है मुझे ये चीज पता चली तो क्या चीज एक ऐसी चीज जो हो है नहीं जो बनी नहीं है लेकिन उसके सोच से इतनी सारी चीजें हो रही ओके एट द लास्ट पार्ट इट सेज दिस प्रेजेंस इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूटिव एलिमेंट ऑफ वॉट माइट बी कॉल्ड द कल्चर ऑफ इंडियन स्ट्रीट ओके रिमेम्बर अगेन द स्ट्रेस इज ऑन द वर्ड माइट सो इफ आई लुक एट माइट माइट के चक्कर में पहला वाला ऑप्शन वाई बिकॉज वो क्या कह रहा है टू डिस्कस द कल्चर ऑफ द इंडियन स्ट्रीट नहीं क्योंकि वो तो प्रोबेबिलिटी की बात कर रहा है माइट की बात कर रहा है तो वो तो डिस्कस कर ही नहीं सकता है और मैंने क्या बोला है कि यू हैव टू फ्यूज बोथ द फर्स्ट पार्ट एंड द सेकंड पार्ट कंबाइन देम टू गेट टू द आंसर सो एनी इट इज नॉट बींग डिस्कस इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑल्सो सेकेंड सेज टू इंटरप्रेट द डिजाइन सेंसिबिलिटीज ऑफ अर्बन आर्किटेक्ट डियर आउट हेयर इन दिस क्वेश्चन there is nothing mentioned of an architect if at all there is something mentioned we are talking about architecture now architect and architecture are as distinct as a cricket and a and cricketer right so since cricket and cricketer cannot be equal right likewise architect and architecture cannot be equal so bravo also goes for a toss bravo means b option let's move to chali which says to highlight the fact that urban dreams continue to add life to the actuality of the streets if you carefully look at the first part and the second part you will get to know that the skywalks were not a reality they were actually something that was in ideologies there was something that was in dreams and it was trying to change the urban landscape right from the first part and the second part which gives me which gives me charlie as the correct answer if i look at d delta it says to criticize building of skywalks that are now shaping the mumbai skyline nowhere in the first paragraph we have discussed about mumbai so delta cannot be an answer my answer is 32 ka charlie that is c Yeah, the next question. Thirty fourth. And the question is, why, according to the author, is the culturalist approach more compelling perspective on the streets? Okay. Now, I will have to go to the culturalist approach more compelling. So, I have to find out why compelling. Uh, Okay, so I move to um, yeah, I find it here, and it says the cultural perspective is important because so it's the reason here. It highlights the specificity of urban experience. However, at times its effect is to rigidify difference, right? So, why? Because it highlights the specificity of urban experience. Let's move to the question thirty-four. right so if you look at the option it focuses on particularity of the impression that the city elicits alpha says it is most important argument oh, alpha is not the correct right uh, bravo it focuses on particularity of the impression that uh, city elicits i don't know about it maybe may not be let's look at c it highlights the living experience that one gains in urban setup uh is it talking about uh, urban setup highlights the living experience that one gains one gains in the urban setup has not been discussed delta says it represents the indian street better than nahi ye cheez to hi likhi hui hai so my answer is b bravo 34 34 ka bravo hai uh ha 34 ka bravo hai okay the next question is 36 Which of the following has or have not been mentioned by the author of the criticism of right to food campaign? 
right? If I look at the 36th question, it says experts on food security expend their energies elsewhere and uh, uh, focusing or focusing on critical issues like child malnutrition. malnutrition. Now, this is a very common trick that people actually uh, play with you, the, 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 the question setters play with you. This sentence is correct, right? It is there in the passage. It is very much written out that passage. You might say that this is correct, but remember, this is, is this a, the question to ask is, is this a criticism of the right to food campaign? Well, just go back and read it. It is not. It is not a criticism out there, right? It is just a thing which has been mentioned out there. Or my question is, which of the following has not been mentioned? It is written out there. One is a correct statement written out there, but still it is not a criticism out there. Just check your uh, question sheet, okay? Uh, so one definitely is not there. So uh, I will have to check two and three. Two ko check karte. It says children suffer from lack of micronutrients and lentils and edible oil, season seasonal vegetables, milk and fruit. Now, is this again a criticism for that? No, it is not. Again, it is mentioned out there, but it is not a criticism. So my answer should be 36 ka Charlie. That is C. That is one and two. Guys, please be quick when I ask which question to discuss because once I move ahead, I cannot go back to the question. Now you are saying 35th, so this is I am doing it for the final time. Please be quick when I say that. Uh, criticism, can you explain again? What is criticism? Criticism means something that is being criticized. Something that I am talking about negative. 35th says, according to the author, uh, what is a major failing of debate on food security. So I have to find out what is the major failing. It means that where it has fallen, right? What is the main uh, failure of it, right? Pahela, it focuses on commercial and not social aspects of food. It focuses on prices of the commodities and not the commodities themselves. Well, Bravo is not discussed. Charlie does not focus on the fact that food is a livelihood option for many. Ye bhi nahi discuss kiya hua hai. Major failing dekhna, mujha major fall, failure. It fails to focus on subtle aspects of food production is not, not again there. If you read it carefully, it says that it focuses on commercial and not social aspects of food. Pahla paragraph mein, oh, the, towards the first paragraph, the answer is there. Right? So I think 35th ka A, 35th should be A. 35th ka answer should be A. 37th. Consider the following assumptions, which of them are valid. Right? Uh, when a work on food security will be comprehensive only when it is understood that distribution is a major issue. Uh, देख लीजिए पैसेज में कहाँ लिखा हुआ है कि इसको हम तब भी समझ सकते हैं जब तभी, right? So okay, so why too wrong? Okay, two says ironically, work on food security leads to the problems of unemployment and malnutrition among the very people it seeks to serve, right? The says is ironically. चलिए देखते हैं अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड माल न्यूट्रिशन क्या करता है फूड सिक्योरिटी देखते हैं कहां पे डिस्कस किया हुआ है इसका दिस पैराग्राफ डज नॉट लिस्टेड कविता It's not discussed even in this part. It's not even here. Last paragraph. Okay. Yeah, it would only result in other lease of life or economic paradigm which addresses the distribution of food after that. What constitutes food has been reduced to bare bones and then produced in ways that give rise to unemployment, environmental disruption, and food prices for rural, rural poor. Kavita, it's not evident. Recognizing, even I started from the first part, recognizing that malnutrition is more than merely a calorific food deficit is a point of departure to appreciate that food security requires a far more variegated and concerted effort than a simple policy paradigm for the distribution of bags of cereals. Right? It is not talking about any specificity. We quickly move to 67, 66, 67. 60, uh, 60. Please be quick. 65. You said. Let's move to 65. 
Uh, <laughs> H65, these, these are real easy pickings, right? You need not, uh, I don't know how we have a doubt here, but still, if it's a doubt, I'll try to address it. Okay, the question is, the Grogswig coffers, right? Kya the? They were inexhaustible, they were a gift from a king, got exhausted when the barons was pregnant, got exhausted when the, when needed the most, okay? I will have to check what does it stand here for, okay? So, let's go, go to the passage and let's uh, try to concentrate on Grogswig offer. Okay? And we have the Grogswick coffers here, right? The Grogswick coffers ran low, though the Swilhorsian family had looked upon them as inexhaustible. Yani ki, Grogswick offers ran low, it was less, jabki, that is, despite of the fact that this particular family looked upon them as inexhaustible. So they thought that it will not diminish, it will not exhaust, right? But still it was keeping low. And just when the Baroness was on the point of making a 13th addition to the family pedigree, Von Kodelvoth discovered that he had no means of replenishing them. Okay? So, now I am going to go to question pe, 65. Pe. So, 65. Grotswick coffers were inexhaustible. No, it was thought to be inexhaustible. Were a gift from a king? I don't know anything about it. Got exhausted when the Baroness was pregnant? Oh yes, it has been mentioned that when she was about to add the new entrant to the family and something, right? Is it alright, Dinesh? Dinesh, if you are there, please type yes or they never mention it as exhaustible. Yes, dear, they 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 mentioned they were inexhaustible. It says they were inexhaustible, Grogswick coffers. Look at the question, it says the Grogswick coffers ran low though the Swilhorsian family had looked upon them as inexhaustible. So they thought that it was inexhaustible, which is not only said ran low. Why can't be a? Why can't be a? My dear, what was the reality? If Grogswick coffers ran low, though the Silhausen family had looked upon them as inexhaustible. Matlab, I'm saying that Tendulkar uh, scored a 60, right? Though the audience uh, expected him to score a century. So the thing, what is the reality? Tendulkar scored a 50, not a century. Right, so the reality is not what the people were expecting, but the reality was what happened. So, hua kya what the Grogzik coffers ran low. So, how they were inexhaustible? They were thought to be inex inexhaustible, but they were not. Right, whereas Charlie says it got exhausted when the Baroness was pregnant. Is it clear, Dinesh, now? Something that is thought to be something cannot be true. Alright, Dinesh? That pause is not helping me. Yes, dear, it was mentioned only ran low. Okay, Dinesh, you got it. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, next question, Dinesh, or shall I move to Kavita who says 51? Quick. These are easy ones, Dinesh. Uh, you should not be in a doubt with these ones. Yeah, Manish, 70, I got it. 68, Tanmoy. Okay, so the least is 51, so let me move to 651 first. Okay, consider the following assumptions. India lags behind the world on income levels and measures should be taken to improve the employment opportunities. Right? So I'm talking about the 51st question. India lags behind the world on income levels and measures should be taken to improve the employment opportunities. Where do I get that? Let's look at the passage. <coughs> okay, why 2 is wrong? Fine, good. Uh, the Indian middle class cannot be defined as it is an ever-changing segment and does not fit in with the global standard. So what do I have to see? The definition of Indian middle class, okay, and the reason. A clear statistical definition of Indian middle class has long been elusive. What does that mean? It means that you have never understood it, okay. And my option says... Sorry, which one? 51. The Indian middle class cannot be defined as it is an ever-changing segment and does not fit in 
with the global standards. Now lo let's look at for the reasons. So part of the problem is that middle segment of India's income range is still poor by global standards, right? Part of the problem. So it's not the complete problem, right? And if I look at the question, it says, the Indian middle class cannot be defined as it is an ever changing segment and does not fit in with the global standards, right? So it cannot be the reason exactly. It's partly, partly a problem. 68. I'm moving to 68, right? Anything before 68? Quick. 53. Uh, which of the following can be inferred from the given passage? The range at which Indian middle class is defined is still above the standards in the country? No, it is not. It has been compared to the world, right? I cannot comment with the standards in the country. So I'm comparing this Indian middle class with that of the world then how can I comment it that it is com being compared with the standards in the country? I am not comparing it with the standards in the country. Ya Tanmoy and Kavita, I am discussing 53rd itself. Okay, so Alpha goes for a toss. Bravo says, some experts would argue that 4 to 10 dollar range is unreasonable in order to define Indian in the Indian middle class. Let's look at the last paragraph, that's where the, uh, the, the, the part is discussed. Uh, the fourth dollar, no, not here. While these numbers identify a class firmly in the middle of the income distribution of a country like Brazil, the four to ten dollar range is still among the top thirty of Indians. In India, you could argue that the right thresholds are little lower, admits birth that's all, but she, four to ten dollar is not unreasonable. She says it is not unreasonable, right? Whereas it says is unreasonable. So therefore, I mean like Bravo also goes for a toss. So Alpha Bravo goes go for a toss. I look for Charlie. Charlie says, households in the middle class range are always in the danger of falling back into the poverty. Remember the word is always, uh, I will, look, it, to me it's an extreme option. I'm talking about always. Now I would request you to go back to the para or to the passage and look, is it talking that it will always happen? From my side, even without referring to the para, it is no, because it's an always. Now it's your challenge to take to to take that you go to the para since you have the sheet in front of you. Go and see that is it saying that the middle class range are always in the danger of falling back to into poverty? Tanmoy Kavita. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so it's a no. So. Uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie, none of them work, so my answer should be D, and if I check my answer, the answer should be D, yeah, Delta, okay. So Tonmay Kavita, uh, the 53 discussed, and the next earliest was 68, right, so I'm moving to 68 now. Yeah, teacher, 68, question 68, uh, again, uh, 69 also, Shekhar Nandal, okay, yeah, fine, okay, I'll just discuss 68 and 69 also, but still, these are easy pickings, you should, as a candidate, you should never get them wrong, these are the easiest they can come to you, still, 68, okay, 68 talks that uh, Peter was what happened, Peter had a twin brother, Peter lived in Mrs. Hene Falcon's Peter woke up and watched his brother Yafin Nanado. Let's get back to the passage. Yeah. Okay. So since a very it's, it's a it's a very short one, so let's go through it. Peter Morton woke up with a start to face the first light. Rain tapped against the glass, it was January the fifth. He looked across the table on which a night light had guttered in a into a pool of water at the other bed. Right? So there was another bed out there. Francis was still asleep and Peter lay down again with his eyes on his brother. So what does it mean that he had a brother? It amused him to imagine it was himself whom he watched. The same hair, the same eyes, the same lips and the line of cheek. But he thought, but the thought towels and the mind went back to the fact which lent the day importance, blah, 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 whatever happens, right? So what is happening? Peter is looking at Francis who is his brother and he's saying that in the passage reads that it is it amused him to imagine it was himself. Yani wo jise dekh raha tha, wo khud tha. 
which the same hair, the same as the, the same line of cheek, it means that Francis, uh, 68, yeah. it means that Peter had a, uh, Peter woke up and was his brother, Peter had a twin brother, well I cannot say that Peter had a twin brother, uh, woke up and was his brother, I can only be sure about that Peter woke up and watched his brother, that was what he was watching. Twin, I cannot say by by the following all these reasons, right? Rain has been mentioned in the first passage. Yeah, so how does it matter, Shekhar, if Rain has been mentioned in the first passage? That has got nothing to do with Peter, what, what Peter was. So the thing is that Peter woke up and watched his brother. Now since he was having identical features, does not mean that he was a, he was a twin. It has nowhere been mentioned out there, right? So my answer is that Peter woke up and watched his brother. 69th. Okay, so see it clear. I'm moving to 69 now. Uh, that's fairly easy, Shekhar. It is saying that January the 5th, right? Uh, what will the answer? You tell me. Well, uh, uh, let's get back to the passage. Still, uh, it it is from the from the lines that we left after that, right? But the thought paused and the mind went back to the fact which lent the day important, which lent the day importance, right? That is my question. Uh, lent the day the importance. It was the 5th of January. So what was that important? It was 5th of January. He could hardly believe a year had passed since Mrs. Uh, Hene Falcon had given her last children's party, right? Her last children's party. Okay. Now, 69th says, January the 5th was what? Was the birthday of Peter? How can you say that? Uh, was the birthday of Peter? It could be anyone. It could be Francis. It is also not mentioned that. Uh, okay. Uh, dear, it. <laughs> if you see that it's a stormy day, it is nowhere mentioned that it was a stormy day. Peter Morton woke up with a start to face the first light. Rain tapped against the glasses. It was January the fifth. So where is it mentioned that it was a stormy day? Right. So it goes for rain tap. Rain tapping does not mean there's a storm shaker. Shaker storm means Andi Tufan, right? So there might be rain without Andi Tufan also, na? So this means that if you are sitting on the floor of the floor, you are sitting on the floor of the Andi Tufan is not necessary, na? Fine, you got it. Okay. Tarun sir, please explain question 73. Question 73. Well, this is not Tarun sir this side. This is Abhishek this side, right? Uh, but however, I'll move to 73. But before that, uh, there was something else. 69. Kar liya Anything else? No, 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 no worries, Ashok. Yeah. Uh, 69. Ke baad kuch? 72. Fine. So after 72, we'll take up 73 also, Ashok. Okay, which of the following statement is or are correct according to the passage, right? Now, realizing one's potential can lead one to success in life. Ye aapke soch ka fitur hai, aisa kuch likha hua nahi hai, fir bhi hum dekh lete hai. Ek bar dekh le ke aap keh raha hai, realizing one's potential can lead one to success in life, right? Yeah, it says, uh, we despair thinking that nothing good can possibly come for, from us. We neglect to water the good within us and eventually it dies. We never realize our potential. So, what are we saying? We don't give our own good to our own, we don't give our own good to them, we don't water them, right? We don't do anything good with them and eventually it dies. We never realize our potential. हम जो बन सकते थे वो हम नहीं बनते, ठीक है? अब क्या ये जो बन सकना था, क्या ये है कि वो हम अच्छे बनने की बात कर रहे थे? Realizing one's potential can lead to one to success in life. Where is that success in life coming from? Is it been discussed in has it been discussed in the passage? Well, my answer is no. It depends upon you. How do you look at it? There is nothing like that discussed out there, right? 
So uh, if I look at 72, the first one goes for a toss. Second says, sometimes people fail to clearly understand their own capacity. Yes, that is written out there, right? At times, so it, which means sometimes. So my answer should be 72 ka B. 72, 72 B. Yeah, bravo. Two only. Right, with that we move to 73, okay, 8 items, each is one situation, okay, so this is decision making we are talking about, okay. Okay, fine, this is decision making, remember in a decision making question, uh, your duty comes first, there are certain certain basic concepts in, in, uh, in, in decision making and one of those concepts is that as a person, your duty will come first, then anything will come, your emotions will never come first. Even if you have to consider an emotion, it would be the other people's emotion which has to be taken care of, not yours. Okay. The other part is, at times, the one answer that you have to choose might not be the best one, but still you will have to choose one option, right? Because so it's not a matter of saying that konsa galat hai, konsa sahi hai. It is about which one is a better suitable answer, which one is a suitable answer uh, as per you. Also remember that uh, UPSC tries to see you as what kind of a person you are, basis the this is making questions. Such questions are also asked in many B schools wherein they, uh, where they come as a part of psychometric tests. Okay, so it's sort of a psychometric test where there is nothing like a correct answer or an incorrect answer. The thing is that you have to be as close as to the ideal candidate that the UP that the UPSC envisages. Keeping in mind that your duty will come first. Emotions have not to be taken care of. Also remembering that out of the four options, there might be none of the correct, there would be none of those options which would be, you know, uh, suitable. But still, you still you'll find an option which is more suitable, most suitable amongst them, okay? So if I look at 73rd, it says, you are, a, you are a district magistrate. It has come to your notice that poor people are using the land meant for agriculture for bird farming, which is prohibited in the area. Now, this is something that is one problem they have done. There is something that is prohibited, they are doing it. So one, there can be an action taken against. However, this is a lucrative occupation and as, a, then as compared to a normal agriculture activity, the grain spread for the birds in the farms attracts stray birds in the area. So, grain ke chalte kya hota hai? Chidiya aya jari hai. Aur wo kya kar rahi hai? Problem create kar rahi hai Air Force ke liye. Thik hai? In the area and may result in accident. So, kya hoga? Ab yahan pe dousa kya hoa? Air Force ke saath ek to uh, bohat hi sensitive establishment hai. Thik hai? Air Force. Aur wahan pe ho sakta hai janwal ka nuksan ho. ठीक है तो आप क्या करोगे ऐसे में याद रखिएगा आप एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट है ठीक है यानी कि आपके पास कुछ करने की क्षमता है पावर है इफ आई लुक एट द ऑप्शन फर्स्ट लेट देम कंटिन्यू विद द बर्ड फार्मिंग नो यू विल नॉट ठीक है इवन इफ दे आर पुअर बट द थिंग इज दैट पुअर के चलते आप देश का जान माल का नुकसान नहीं करेंगे प्लस दे आर डूइंग समथिंग दैट इज नॉट दैट इज प्रोहिबिटेड सो कल के रेट में डीडीए की जमीन पे जाकर के कोई घर बना लेगा बोलेगा कि मैं तो गरीब हूं साहब मुझे काम करने दो तो दैट इज इलीगल राइट सो अल्फा गोज फॉर अ टॉस ब्रावो की बात करें सेंड ए टीम ऑफ ऑफिशियल्स एंड पुलिसमैन टू इमीडिएटली स्टॉप द बर्ड फार्मिंग एज इट इज प्रोहिबिटेड बिल्कुल करेंगे आप क्योंकि भाई वो काम नहीं करना है दैट इज प्रोहिबिटेड हाउ कैन यू गो एंड डू इट राइट चार्ली सेज अद्रेस डोज प्रैक्टिसिंग बर्ड फार्मिंग इन्फॉर्मिंग देम दैट एंड टेल देम टू रिलोकेट इफ दे विश टू कंटिन्यू विद एंटरप्राइज राइट सो ये भी एक सही ऑप्शन है जो आप कर सकते हैं सर थर्ड डी डेल्टा कैर आज एयरफोर्स टू अब साहब आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट कहीं के भी हो लेकिन आप एयरफोर्स को तो नहीं बोलेंगे अपना अपना बेस शिफ्ट करने के लिए करने के लिए सो so, मेरा आंसर क्या बचता है बी और सी ब्रावो और चार्ली अब इसमें अगर मुझे प्रेसिडेंस देने की बात की जाएगी तो मैं पहले ब्रावो को बोलूंगा क्यों क्योंकि जब तक आप जाकर एड्रेस करोगे बर्ड फार्मिंग को इन्फॉर्म करोगे उन, उनको बताओगे कि जाकर रिलोकेट करो इफ दे विश टू कंटिन्यू विद एंटरप्राइज तो तब तक क्या हो जाएगा आप दो काम कर रहे हो एक यू आर डिलेइंग द डिसीजन उस बीच कोई एक्सीडेंट हो सकता है दूसरा क्या कह रहे हैं आप उनको इफ दे विश टू कंटिन्यू विद एंटरप्राइज उनको करना है तो जाके करो तो सबसे पहले तो उन्होंने वो काम किया जो प्रोहिबिटेड था उसकी सजा मिलनी चाहिए ठीक है सो देस फोर इफ इफ आई वर टू टेक प्रेसिडेंस एनी पर्टिकुलर ऑप्शन हैज टू टेक अ प्रेसिडेंस इट वुड बी ब्रावो फर्स्ट एंड चार्ली नेक्स्ट एनीथिंग एल्स बियॉन्ड सेवेंटी थ्री वाई नॉट बी Dear Bravo is a correct answer. I'm not saying that uh, Bravo is not correct. Bravo is correct. In fact, Bravo will be should be your first first answer. Yeah, you have marked C, but the thing is that uh, UPSC will choose one. So there, thereby, uh, CL might have chosen one one of these answers. Though, but there are two answers for this question. 
एंड विच इज ब्रावो ऑल्सो एंड चार्ली ऑल्सो या 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 यू मार्क सी बिकॉज मैंने जो बताया अशोक कि आप चार्ली में वो ढूंढ कर गलती जो उन्होंने की उसकी सजा नहीं दे रहे हो जब तक आप उनको जाके समझाओगे तब तक क्या हो जाएगा हो सकता है क्रैश हो जाए तो देर इज अ प्रॉबेबिलिटी राइट इसीलिए चार्ली में आपको जीरो मिल गया सेवेंटी फोर्थ ओके सेवेंटी फोर्थ यू आर अ जज एट अ हाई कोर्ट अ केस रिलेटेड गैंग रेप हैज कम टू योर कोर्ट एंड नेशन वाइड प्रोटेस्ट एंड आउटरेज ऑन दिस इश्यू आर माउंटिंग प्रेशर ऑन यू दैट द क्यूज बी गिवन अ डेथ सेंटेंस इन लाइट ऑफ द हीनियस क्राइम दैट दे हैव कमिटेड यू विल तो सबसे पहले तो साहब आप जज बन गए हाई कोर्ट के और क्या हो रहा है गैंग रेप का केस है और नेशन पूरे कंट्री में प्रोटेस्ट चल रहा है और प्रेशर बनाया जा रहा है ऑन यू दैट द क्यूज बी गिवन डेथ सेंटेंस तो देखो सबसे पहले तो बात आपकी ड्यूटी पहले आएगी ड्यूटी अगर कोई दोषी है तो वो तब तक दोषी नहीं होगा जब तक उसको कोर्ट साबित नहीं करती है यहाँ पे कैंगरू कोर्ट तो चल नहीं रहा है कि पीपल प्रेशराइज एंड देन यू विल अकॉर्डिंगली टेक अ डिसीजन इट नेवर हैपन्स राइट इट्स अ कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ राइट वेयर द लॉ विल प्रिवेल नॉट वॉट पीपल सेंटिमेंट्स आर ओके एल्फा इमीडिएटली अवॉर्ड अ डेथ सेंटेंस टू दैट यूज इवन विदाउट हियरिंग गेट नाउ दिस इज द मोस्ट रिडिक्यूलस एंसर दैट एनी वन कैन थिंक ऑफ If I look at Bravo, Bravo says award the death sentence to the accused after a proper hearing of the case. Now the thing is that आपने decision पहले ले लिया कि आपको award death sentence करना है after the hearing. So how is that a proper hearing? जब आपने पहले ही सोच लिया है कि उसको death sentence देना है proper hearing के बाद. तो proper hearing के बाद death sentence क्यों हो सकता है proper hearing के बाद पता चला वो कुसुरवार नहीं है. फिर क्या करोगे? So Bravo is not an option. Let's look at Charlie. Hear the situation totality and take a decision as per the provisions of the law. ये सही है ठीक है कि आपको केस को सुनिए और टेक अ डिसीजन एज पर द प्रोविजन ऑफ द लॉ डेल्टा सेज अश्योर द नेशन दैट द विक्टिम विल गेट जस्टिस एज पर द लॉ ऑफ द हाँ या 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 आई एम कमिंग एट सी वेट वेट अशोक वेट गोल्ड ठीक है अश्योर द नेशन दैट द विक्टिम विल गेट जस्टिस एज पर द लॉ ऑफ लैंड नाउ लुक वॉट वॉज द कंसर्न दैट यू आर हैविंग द कंसर्न वॉज दैट देर इज अ माउंटिंग प्रेशर दैट पीपल आर दैट पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सर्ट राइट सो Charlie, it's not that Charlie is incorrect. But the thing is that first, in both Charlie and Delta, right, justice is being served, right? Ashok, yes or no? In both Charlie and Delta, justice is being served. Ashok, say yes. Okay, good. Okay. However, in Delta, you are also addressing the problem that the that the that the problem posed to you, that the question posed. The question was posing that people are. uh people are protesting against so you should also assure them that okay uh assure the nation because nation is an uh, is on the uprising so we'll assure them ki jo bhi hoga law ke hisab se ho so therefore delta is a complete answer then charlie however that does not mean that charlie is incorrect right so charlie and delta would be correct answers however precedent preference wise your answer should be first which should be d delta Yeah, judge never assures anyone. Uh, correct, Shekhar. But remember, uh, if you if you if you follow if you follow uh, if you have followed the newspaper recently, Altamus Kabir had also to come out and say that uh, uh, let law takes its own course. And this happened 15 days back when Altamus Kabir Kabir had to make a, a statement out there. At times, attorney general also has to make a statement out there, right? And this is all that has happened. Therefore. he never comes in media and assures then how was that uh, but the case were never but the case were never matlab in the supreme court you are a judge at a high court yeah i am talking about if if a supreme court judge can come out why can't a high court judge come out when it is a when it is a concern of uh, of uh, of national importance Yes, I was telling about the recent incident, Dinesh. The issue is not who comes and speaks. the The issue is they can come and speak if there is. Yeah, if if there is a concern that yes, this is something that is affecting the nation. You can see there are nationwide protests, right? And people are pressurizing you. So therefore, you will come out and you will you will actually assure the nation that the victim will get justice as per the law of the land. so justice will be upheld 
right but that should be said to the uh, said to the to, to to the citizen yeah for see they will not give them look uh, uh, to the questions kavita dinesh uh, and uh, whosoever is discussing this question my my concern is that look what uh, what upsc is discussing uh, what upsc is thinking i cannot comment on that right because these are the questions on which the view is made by the person who sets the question okay so i can only try to come as close as what upsc expects from an ideal candidate right so therefore i uh, we cannot sit here and say that we'll look because my main concern is not clearing the clk examination my main concern is clearing the upsc examination so my imperative out here is that you should be able to make an answer mark an answer which is the best suitable answer amongst all right question number 75 यू आर वन ऑफ द मेम्बर्स ऑफ पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन चलिए साहब आपको सिलेक्शन का वो बना दिया वाई नॉट डी ओके सेवेंटी फिफ्थ का आप बोल रहे हैं वाई नॉट डी लॉज ऑफ फॉर्मल कंप्लेन अगेंस्ट इन दिस इन द अप्रोप्रिएट या ये तो आंसर है ही सेवेंटी फिफ्थ का एक मिनट मुझे आंसर चेक करने दिया सेवेंटी फिफ्थ का सेवेंटी फिफ्थ का डी तो है ही आंसर अशोक Lodge a formal complaint against this in the appropriate agency. Okay, why not A? Approach the governor of the state of pricing of the whole issue and action against the chairman. So, आप कर क्या हो? आप ये जरा ध्यान से दीजिए कि आप 76 की बात कर रहे हैं, right? Uh, आपके पास क्या था यू आर वन ऑफ द मेंबर्स ऑफ पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन द चेयरमैन ऑफ द कमीशन हैज टेकन वन ऑफ द मेंबर्स अब्रॉड अबॉर्ड एंड इलीगली सिलेक्टेड कैंडिडेट्स फॉर चिल्ड्रन ऑफ सम इन्फ्लुएंशियल पीपल Uh, this selection does not have the approval of other members of the commission aap kya karoge theek hai pehla approach the governor of the state uprising of the whole issue and ask him to take action against the chairman now there is something called as as a an in a leadership position uh, uh, ashok there is always something called proactiveness right ki aap khud se kya karte ho approaching the governor of the state uprising of the whole issue and ask him to take action against the chairman is correct i'm not saying it is wrong But if I have an option, we say the lodge a formal complaint against this in appropriate agency. So, जो भी agency कर रही है, वहाँ पे जाकर के आप एक formal complaint lodge करोगे, ठीक है? How do I know that इसके ऊपर governor ही फैसला ले सकता है? I it it might be, might not be. Therefore, if I compare alpha and delta, delta takes a precedence where I look. It is saying delta is saying lodge a formal complaint against this in the appropriate agency. So, मुझे ये decide करना है which one is an appropriate agency. Whatsoever it is, I'll go and lodge a complaint against. Next precedence would be approach the governor of the state, apprising him of the whole issue, and ask him to take action against the chairman. Therefore, as I see it, eightieth, eightieth. 78 if opt a option a is not i think weak will power i'm so sorry guys i don't understand sms lingo so uh, if you could elaborate it and write i will be in a better position to understand i'm bad with this kind of english A is not then. I think it is poor will. I think a poor will power. Uh, yeah, okay, power. Poor will power. So poor. Okay, if A then poor. Okay. I uh, so will power is a is a is a word which comes together, right? Will and power are not alike. They are not different. Okay. So will power. It shows poor will power. Which one? A. हम कौन सा कर रहे थे? Seventy. हाँ यार seventy sixth. No no no. I think I goofed up the twenty fifth. Yeah this one seventy fourth right? Seventy fourth इसे immediately नहीं नहीं ये भी नहीं है. हम कौन सा कर रहे थे? Seventy. 
fifth. Yeah. Approach the governor of the state apprising of the whole issue and we are, it, it's you are correct out there, right? It is showing that you are not a proactive person. You cannot do it something on yourself. So, I found it, I go and make a complaint in the appropriate agency. Okay, 75th ke baad kaun sa? 80, 80. Okay, 78. Okay, Tanmoy, 78. You are a newly appointed manager at a public sector bank. The branch where you are posted has an unusually large number of loan defaulters. As a result, the branch has been facing heavy losses for a long time. You are expected to revive the situation. Aapko situation ko. Ashok, aap kya bol rahe sir? Please clear. If you are senior going to wrong or unconstitutional, then why I can't oppose? You are not opposing uh, Ashok, even if you are going to be governor, you are not opposing, you are also lodging a complaint there. You are not opposing. To the governor as you go, you are, you are actually complaining out there. So rather than complaining, why not go to a particular agency which takes care of it. So let's say that, let's say that, for example, if CAG does it, I don't know whether it does or not, but let's, let's say that XYZ agency does it. So I'll go to XYZ agency and file a complaint rather than going and scribbing about it to, to the governor. Okay. 78. Uh, you are a newly appointed manager of public blah, blah, blah. Uh, you are expected to revise the decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fine, fine. Thanks, thanks, Jok. Why not C in question number 78? Why not C? Okay, fine. Let's look at 78. Why not C? Analyze all the case and then work on an appropriate strategy. Fine. Okay. It's not wrong as if Delta says get inputs from your subord 78. Kar rahe, right? Get inputs from your subordinates about the problem and use them to solve this problem. Right. Uh, analyze all the case and then work out an appropriate plan. Remember that you are new at this place. Right, you are a newly appointed. Stress on the question is, you are a newly appointed manager. So it means that if you start analyzing all the case and then work out an appropriate strategy, that will take some time. I'm not saying that it is incorrect, but if I look at Delta, it says that get inputs from the subordinates about the problem and use them. So since you are no new, right, uh, you will definitely look for help from people uh, uh, who are your subordinates because they were working there before you, right. So therefore, uh, Delta comes first and Charlie comes next. Okay, one more. Uh, we move to seven, uh, 80, right? 80. And the 80th is the last question and it is, you are an official in the district education department who oversees the proper function of schools in every respect. Now the question, now the part to be taken care of here is every respect, right? It means that kuch bhi hoga, you are taking care of it, right? It means you have got enough sufficient power. You have received a complaint about an employee of a school that the school authorities are involved in wrongful practices with regards to the compensation of the employee. So there has been some problem going on with the compensation given to the employees. Uh, the law clearly states that the school employees are to be paid the salary as per the rules of the state government you will. So one, there is a correct, there is a, there is a direct uh, violation of the laws which was mentioned, state law ka violation hai pe. Okay. Ab aap kya karoge? Pahla, raid the school as a part of investigation and confiscate the books of the account of the social administration for audit. Bilkul kar sakte hai aap, kyunki aapke paas har tarah ki functioning karne ka aapke paas power hai. Right? So alpha is there. Let's look at Bravo. Ask the, complaint, ask the complainant to lodge an FIR against the school authorities and let the law take its course. Right? And third, uh, tell the complainant to bring hard evidence to the bekar hai, Charlie. Uh, immediately approach the school manager and discuss the situation with whom off the record. Aap off the record discuss nahi karenge. Complain agar aapko, aapke paas personally aake koi ek official complain kar raha hai, to how can you discuss that complain off the record? So Delta goes for a toss, Charlie goes for a toss, my fight is between Bravo and Alpha. Right? Ab, uh, saab Alpha mein aapke the school as part of the investigation and confiscate the books of account of the school administration. If I compare this with B, bravo, ask the complainant to lodge an FIR against the school authorities and let the law take its course, right? If I will have to writ, why not C option? C can I tell the complainant to, ab dekho, fir ye ho gaya ki, agar aap koi bhi complain karega, thik hai, uh, complain karega, to aap usko kya bologe, uh, evidence leke hao, hard evidence against the school authorities in order to register a complaint in your office. To, फिर ये क्या हो गया यानी इसके बाद कोई भी कंप्लेन आएगा फिर कंप्लेन करने के लिए उसके पास एक एक हर चीज के पास एक एविडेंस होना चाहिएगा तो इस तरह से हर बार हर कोई आपको कंप्लेन नहीं कर पाएगा ना 
क्योंकि हर कंप्लेन के लिए एविडेंस जैसे कि आपको एक कंप्लेन दिया कि मुझे लेट से मुझे मेरे ऊपर क्या बोलू मैं मेरे ऊपर कैन टेक एनी प्रॉब्लम इन ऑफिस कि मेरे पास मेरे ऑफिस में ये प्रॉब्लम हो रही है मेरे साथ ठीक है लेट से दैट लोग मुझे मुझे मेरे 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 क्या बोलू मैं मेरे 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 कलर के चलते लोग मुझे ऑफिस में परेशान करते हैं ठीक है नाउ इफ आई मेक अ कंप्लेन टू माय सीनियर मैं इस बेसिस पे कहां से एविडेंस लेके आऊंगा लोग कहेंगे नहीं मैं नहीं करता हूं राइट सो इट मीन्स दैट आई विल हैव टू एक्सेप्ट द कंप्लेन फर्स्ट राइट एज अ सुपीरियर आई एक्सपेक्ट आई एक्सेप्ट द कंप्लेन एंड देन इनिशिएट माई ओन इंक्वायरी इन टू इट ओके ओके सो ब्रावो और डेल्टा में फिर क्या कर रहा हूं आज द कंप्लेन टू लॉज एन एफ आई आर अब ये एफ आई आर लॉज करेगा और लॉ जो अपना काम है वो करेगी उसके बाद वाला ऑप्शन में रखूंगा कि मैं खुद से रेड करूं स्कूल को एज अ पार्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन और कॉन्फिस्केट करूं मैं उन सब चीजों को ठीक है सो दे फॉर ब्रावो टेक्स एंड प्रेसिडेंस ओवर एल्फा प्लीज एक्सप्लेन क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी टू जस्ट वॉज ओके Ashok Delta, uh, since there is a confusion at, at times in hearing between B and D, so therefore in the language of Army, A for Alpha, B for Bravo, C for Charlie, D for Delta, E for Eagle, F for Fox Trot, is this how it goes? So therefore I am discussing Delta, Delta, okay? B for Delhi, we can say. Okay, since uh, I hope Ashok that's clear. Since we have finished 80 questions, so I'm not going back. But since this is one last request, which has come for our question number 22 from Shekhar, let me move to question number 22 for one final time, and after that we'll call it a day. Uh, this question was explained by Tarun sir. Yeah, Ashok, thank you so much. Have a great night. This question was explained by Tarun sir uh, earlier. Yeah, it's it's over to Tarun sir, guys. It's good night from my side. Then I will give you the email ID of both people, right? Twenty second. Uh, see when there are two types of statements, right? If I say, hold on. <coughs> there are two types of statements. One is if. when we are if if type of statement okay so when whenever there is a cause there will be a effect and the reverse of that will be if effect will not happen that means cause will not happen this is the condition for it and when we have only if condition then effect will happen leads to cause will happen and the negation of that so what is the cause here only when condition experience a real ndr this is the cause will it improve faster this is the effect so first this should happen and that gives you result of condition should experience it clear this is very much clear in the b option a talks about real india will improve faster now there are through the efforts of the politicians efforts ki baat nahi ki gayi clear now 20 second kisne bhi dabaye shekhar yeah डॉट एम 
एम ए एल आई के सी ए आर डबल आर एल ए यू एम सी एच आर कैसे लिख रहा है डॉट कॉम एंड अभिषेक These are email IDs. Okay, thank you very much. Please close the close the event.